Hello, hello. Okay, is this going through? working are we working yes we are okay good 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 hello welcome everybody <clears throat> yes we are going cool, cool, cool. hello from facebook <laughs> what is that emote i can't even see what that is hey reaper how are you Okay, cool. Um, yeah, all right. So, hello, everybody. Welcome to another Wednesday with me. What does that mean? Well, that means sketching. It means sketching from our brains. A little skull thingies for fun. Um, yeah, so essentially what I do is I grab this, like, a sphere, and I just kind of, like, mash it around, look for some cool shapes, and go from there. Really, that's what it is. It's just a for fun kind of... Um, exercise and if you like what you do with the shapes that you create from your head uh, afterwards you can always look up reference to strengthen your concept and I definitely recommend that if you really do like what you're doing otherwise it's just a really fun exercise to do and I recommend people try doing stuff like this you know not always sticking to an exact like oh I'm gonna study 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 but also just letting yourself be um, a free artist as well I think is equally important but obviously you're gonna wanna reference to strengthen that, you know, mental library. <clears throat> hey, Trivu, how are you? Hey, Kesim. Kesimpa? Is that how you say your name, Norris? My, my apologies, I'm really bad with names. I suck at like talking in general, so um, if you have any questions as I'm going, feel free to ask, as always. Probably just gonna start uh, right now, honestly, because we're a little bit late starting. So, like, yeah. If you have any questions about my process, feel free to ask. Otherwise, just we're just going to be talking about random stuff. Sometimes I glaze over things. Like, I don't realize that, like, people would, like, you know, want to know exactly everything that I'm doing. So if, if something is, like, confusing you, like, why are you doing this or whatever, like, there are no stupid questions, especially if you haven't watched... Um, this kind of a process before but it is it's, it's a lot of fun it's like it's literally like 2d sketching in 3d kind of an idea same thing a hand step by step after you know like there's uh, I would I would start with the palm like as a, a cube and then you can do every single finger by you know multiply or duplicating them around there, there is a, I'm sure there's a couple of tutorials on like Gumroad and things like that, and even on on uh, on YouTube, if you were to look up on YouTube, uh, you know, modeling a hand, you could probably find some things. Google's your, honestly, your best, uh, your your best tool, your best friend when it comes to these kinds of things. I understand that it's like sometimes you just don't really know exactly what it is to look up though. So in that case, there's no like, there's no silly questions or anything like that. But I'm not going to be modeling a hand today. Um, I'm gonna be doing like creature design and just kind of exploring that so if you want like specific tutorials I would recommend looking up things on YouTube. There's a lot. There's a lot of free content out there That is very very helpful and and you know not just YouTube either but like even here on Twitch um, The Pixlogic channel. I mean like they Pixlogic has like a YouTube channel as well so they have like a lot of a lot of content for from live streamers and everything like that. Hey Hector, how are you? Alright, okay. So we gon' we gon' do some stuff. We gon' we gon' we gon' do some stuff. And I'm gonna be really I'll probably be pretty like extra when it comes to shapes today. Sometimes I'm more reserved and I have more of like an idea of what it is that I want. Sometimes I'm like a little like well I don't really know what it is that I want to do so I'm gonna just I'm gonna just be sketchy and all of this stuff is totes fine when you're feeling that sketchiness just letting you know 
Because when you Dynamesh, all of this becomes your friend. So right now it might be a little bit, ooh, what's going on? But all of this actually turns into your friend. All of it becomes usable geometry. So right now, it's just a matter of getting some cool shapes that I can kind of work off of. Like, okay, well, here's like a neck area. This whole thing can be sort of like, I guess we could stand it upright a little bit more. Mm, maybe not that much, maybe like this. I see some stuff going on there, right? Like you can see something something happened in here and then we can get some like I, I like to mask off areas um just just little areas and then put on things like AccuCurve and to get some like you know sharp points and things like that it's usually a, a fun way to get some interesting shapes And again, all of this stretching will, will not be a bad thing because you can dynamesh it and it actually, the artifacts from the dynameshing of, uh, of this low res actually looks pretty cool and it acts as sort of like a sketching guideline when you start to uh, subdivide or dynamesh on higher resolutions. is freeze the stream try refresh oh it's frozen for you so if uh, if your stream ever freezes at any point try refresh i do hard surface but usually hard surface stuff for client work hard surface is not usually something that i do a lot of for fun it's more of like if i'm doing hard surface it'll be like a hard surface organic approach um it's not really like a you know i don't i don't I don't dive into like box modeling. That's not like my my excite. Like I'm not excited about it. I mean, some things I get excited about with that, but most of the time it's just kind of like I. If hard surface is a thing that I'm going to be doing, it's usually uh, with an organic approach. So I'll usually like you know start the same way that I'm starting here. Kind of cool if this thing has like. That, like I just maintain like this sort of like square looking shape. I kind of really like that. Ooh, even this could be cat like. Hello, dynamic. There we go. cat legs, so then that would be out. It's kind of like a beaver though, if it's like that. I don't know. We'll see. See what that ends up turning into. <clears throat> I think it could be interesting though, whatever this ends up being. And yes. Boop, 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 boop. There. So you can see how like, you know, all of these like artifacts that are happening, like this really like low res geo just kind of like crunching, can actually be used as a just roll tool. So I, I usually use it as like a you, you can see how it can kind of look like either feathers or fur or something like that at this stage you, You're not really sure but that's sort of like the same thing as like, you know, when you're when you're doing 2d sketching um, Some of the lines might look like something vague But your brain can kind of put two and two together and figure out what it is that you're you're doing and you can see shapes within like those little scribbles that you're doing like you know construction drawings and things like that and then you clean it up with an ink drawing or you paint over it or whatever right um same thing so we're doing that little like initial scribble stage right here and then 
We'll see what that turns into afterwards. I'm looking for strong shapes, like I keep saying, but the strong shape thing is super important because we're working so low, this is our advantage to kind of get as strong of a shape as we can. So I'm also looking for simplicity. I don't want too many like, you know, turns and things like that. I want something that's sort of like easy to read. Because if I just like kind of keep like breaking the things like right here, you know, that, that, that gets a little confusing. So you want to have like continuous lines in certain areas. Which model is this whack on? This is a um, Cintiq uh, 21, 21.5 inch. It's a unicorn. Wow. You're not late. No, no, no. Hi, Sammy. You're not late. We've only been going for 10 minutes. A software that you use in my workflow. So a lot of the time I'm in ZBrush for a while. Um, just because a lot of the stuff that I do is very like pre-production, like concept stuff. Um, but afterwards, I will go to Keyshot, you know, Photoshop, occasionally Substance, depending, you know, like if I'm doing like a full modeling gig, then I'll go obviously to Substance and Maya, but most of the time for just specifically like, you know, character, concept or creature concept, I stay inside of ZBrush for a while. All right, now we'll do a little bit more. A little bit more fun with stronger, bigger gestural shapes. It's, it's another thing, like uh, people usually send me their like creature stuff and um, like their initial creature stuff, like starting in the, this sort of a uh, method. And a lot of it's really like, it's pretty cool to see, but one thing I'd like to see people try to do a little bit more is do um, larger gestural strokes, I guess you can say. So what I mean by that is like, don't be afraid to like enlarge your brush at the early stages and just kind of like move things to kind of like get like, something more statement-like. Don't move it like just willy-nilly, right? But see if you can get something that's more descriptive of like an interesting character and look for those curves, like, you know? Curves and continuous like lines are always a fun thing to have. Avoid tangents. Okay, and then we can do like one of these guys. I'm just kind of creating some sort of a body here. Some like shoulder blade thing. Also respecting the uh, the overall shape from the front. You don't want to like you know twist and turn and things of that nature. Quite a bit. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Now that like a bunch of you are in here, surviving. Is it hot for anyone else? Anybody up to anything cool? Do you have any questions? <laughs> mm. 
I guess not. It's quiet night. That's kind of nice. So, if anybody really has any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, I'm gonna do my thing. You can do your thing. We can all be doing our things together. Oh, and another thing too I want to mention about um, doing stuff like this is like don't be afraid if uh, or don't be like discouraged rather if you're if you feel like your character or your creature is not like holding up right away honestly like this this stuff like looks ugly until it just doesn't you know like that's like kind of part of part of this process specifically it's just it really is gonna look uh, very ugly until it just doesn't anymore. <laughs> tell you about like this uh this crazy crazy new bird i i have like a i walk near a pond occasionally and there's usually like a bunch of ducks you know like your standard like mallards and stuff like that but lately there's been like one like random farm duck like a totally white with like the uh uh yellow beak kind of like duck that you don't see like in the wild or anything right you usually see them on farms <laughs> so there's been that and then today there was like this really weird really weird crazy bird that i had to kind of look up i kept calling it a demon because all it was doing was like coughing like this duck wouldn't stop coughing this duck looking thing wouldn't stop coughing um, it turns out it was like a, a double crested, what, what was that? Double crested something with a C, um, but they're apparently seabirds and I'm like, I'm not even near the sea, so why is this thing here? And as it, as I was passing it, it decided to lift its tail feathers and just whoosh. <laughs> so that, that was... This is fantastic. That's my first run in with, I think, like a crazy looking demon bird looking thing. <laughs> it was very, very creepy looking. Even their eyes are something else, something, something nutty. Anyways, completely unrelated, but I thought that might be an interesting story to share. Anyways, back to the focus. Double crested, I can't remember what it's called though. Double crested, what is it? Double crested. Hmm. I don't know. Double, double crested. Yeah, I can't remember. Freak of a bird though. Absolute exorcist. Like it sleeps with its head backwards in its back. It's very creepy. And it just does not care. Like people are walking by it and it's just, it just not does not care. Comorant! There you go! That's exactly what it is. Thank you, Sculpt! Yes, a comorant. You got it. Yeah, they're freaks! They're absolute freaks! It scared me. It was making the like craziest noise. I didn't- I didn't know- Honestly, I didn't know how that was even there. <laughs> and they're pretty big, too. Um, what's the most challenging project I've ever worked in? most challenging project i think a lot of them are all challenging for different reasons lately i've been challenged with a couple of like like artistically they've been challenging me which is pretty cool but i think like technically speaking the most challenging project i've ever worked on um was a few years back when i was on the uh like disney's elena um, that was 
that was insane. But I mean, like, there was like a couple of factors as to why that was even that insane. Um, we were like underfunded and I'm not talking, I wasn't working at Disney for this. It was a different studio, it was ARC. Yeah, it was kind of a crazy, crazy experience, technically speaking, because um, there were just like, there weren't enough, like there were enough modelers, I find. It was just like the delegation was not there, you know? Can I like skip from here? No, I can't. Okay, let me skip from, I don't like that song. Um, the delegation was really bad. And so a lot of the time, like they would, get outsourcers to do some of the character work and unfortunately a lot of that was dumped on me when uh when it kind of fell short <laughs> so fixing like over a hundred characters yeah that's how many there were like individual characters it was absolutely insane how many characters were in that show um so that was that was a technical challenge for sure Artistically though, I can't I can't say which ones have been the most artistically challenging because of NDA. <laughs> I know how annoying that is. But yeah, NDA. <laughs> I recently got on to another new project. Like I've got another um, contract going right now. So I've got two contracts. I get off of here, I'll probably be working as well. There might be an error for the stream on YouTube. Like, what do you, like, it's not working? Let's see. Oh yeah, the title is wrong. I can't, I can't do anything about that though. That's not on my end. Uh, <laughs> I don't own the channel. I, I can't change any of that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, hi, I'm I am uh, Daniel. <laughs> no, I think actually he's usually like after me. Hey drummer, what's up? How are you? They're basically Sith swans. Actually though, Sammy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, double crested comorants. They're actual like exorcist birds. Like they freak me out. And I hate how close I was to it too because it wouldn't stop coughing. Like this bird was just coughing. It was like the thing that it did. It was like, it was like running up to the other geese going <coughs> Are you a political bird? Like what is this statement that you're like? It was confusing. I didn't like it. Get out of, get out of this area. What are you doing, you freak bird? Um, Hey Martin, how are you? Yeah, I know, like actually, drummer, I was freaked out. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Not 100% sold on these things. I'm probably gonna do more of like a thinking like a. You you gotta be eating. Oh my god, I'm sorry. If you, like if that crunching is annoying, my dog always decides that the best time to eat is whenever I'm on a call of any kind. Like that means like um, streaming or if I'm on a client call all you can hear in the background all the time is my dog being like you know what this is this is a good time to do this instead of like literally all the other times that i have in the world when you're talking i'm just gonna go <laughs> um 
What program is that? It, it, ZBrush. Yeah, this is the uh, the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. Let's see. You can get like something sort of. I'll play with that in a bit. I wanted what I wanted to do was take this little little bitty. I actually let me see. I should probably just take all of that top part off of that bottom issue. Yeah, that's an issue. Okay, let me see. Let's see if I can get it. No, that masks all of that bottom issue. Let's see if I can get it like this. I decided I wanted to keep these bits, so that is gonna be a thing. can come with it whatever I don't care uh, split and just make sure that all of this is nice and pulled off that's fine I'll split the masked and then this thing can close holes this one and then and start deleting some of these guys and the rest can kind of just come together I don't really care that could stay there. I'll delete that. Uh, that part there too can, can go away. Not that it really matters, cause like when you dynamash this, it really like really doesn't. <laughs> and I wanted to like grab these bits right here, and I just wanted to have. Yes. Am I following a concept? No, I'm just imagination. Imagination station. That's what we do here. I really like doing this kind of stuff because you'll see when you get into like when we start getting into Dynamesh, like what this is gonna end up being and how all of this is actually super cool right now it looks crazy and a lot of people are probably cringing and that's completely normal <laughs> but i promise you the stuff like this actually is pretty pretty fun with dynamesh let's 
do it from here. This is feeling very like almost like Pokemon right now. We can grab. You want that tinier? Larger. Split it. This one. Gonna. This is what I mean by like big gestural things. Like don't be afraid, like at all to do big sweeping actions for the sake of like getting an interesting shape. Don't like what's going on here. Probably, yeah. We'll figure out the face in a bit. Usually on when your D&D &D group, D &D group starts up. Oh, awesome. Yeah, no. Uh, no D&D &D today, I guess. I'm Because I'm always on at the same time. What am I doing? Roy, I am, I am, I am destroying polygons. That's what I'm doing today. Just ripping them a new one. Any recommendations for a first time freelancer in 3D modeling for games, animation, more so games, especially contract wise. So I don't, I don't uh, contract for games. Um, it would be cool if I ever got contacted to do that. Um, but I'm in animation specifically for uh, like TV and film. Um, and in, in terms of like general recommendations for a first time freelancer is I would actually recommend if you can, I know it's hard, but if you can get a studio job, like in house studio, that would probably be your best bet for starting to develop your, um, uh, your network because a freelancer is solely successful based on their network of people that they know. Um, like most of the jobs that I've gotten, 90% of the jobs that I've gotten, contracts, have all been like word of mouth of people that I've worked with that have recommended me to other people, etc, etc. So I would, I would uh, definitely recommend trying to get a studio job first because that's the, that's, that's how I got into freelancing, right? Like I, it's hard for me to recommend you to do something different than what I did like with like gusto, you know, like me just saying like, absolutely, you should do this, it'll work. I know that if you were to get a studio job and you made good connections that way and over a course of a few years and then decided to go freelance, that it would work a lot more successfully. But if you are jumping into freelance just like head first, it's gonna be very hard unless you, you win the lottery of freelance essentially. But um, really like what you're gonna wanna do is be as visible as possible and get your, uh, artwork online as much as possible, right? So like you're gonna want to have stuff on ArtStation, on I don't know, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and just be like posting frequently uh, your your personal work, right? Yeah, I know. I can't really fix that on YouTube though. Sorry, sorry, Ian. But thanks for the heads up. But I can't do anything for it because <laughs> I don't own Pixelogic channel. Um. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, Neri. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what this ends up being. We're just kind of like pushing and pulling shapes as much as possible, right? But yeah, for for first time freelancers, I don't have like like solid solid first time ad like advice other than like you really gotta get your stuff out there and do personal work. And if you can build your network from um, in house studio jobs essentially you don't have to i know a lot of successful freelancers who haven't done that i'm just kind of sharing with you like how i was able to get into freelancing is via uh studio networking But like in terms of like a hub of like, oh, this is where you can get all the jobs and this is this is how you can become a freelancer. Like there is no real like hub. There is no real 
answer for freelancing because essentially what you're doing by being a freelancer, right, is you're becoming an entrepreneur in a sense. You're going to be working for yourself. And so when you're the boss of yourself, when you're a boss of your own sole proprietary company, right, that means that you have to be solely responsible for marketing yourself and finding clients for yourself and all of this kind of stuff. So there's no real like, hey, all freelancers, like all business owners gather in this one spot because that wouldn't make sense for a lot of a lot of freelance competitors. And I know that there's um, I mean, it would it would make sense, but also it, it kind of wouldn't at the same time. It really depends on what side of the uh, the like, are you for union or against, you know, all of this kind of stuff, like all of these like sort of um, working political opinions. And so there isn't really like a, a freelance hub per se, like one sort of like area where you can go to find everything or anything like that. Like there are job postings on places like ArtStation. Uh, if you add the right people on Facebook, you get to see, you know, what their studio is hiring for. But like there's a, there's a bunch of different things that you can do as a new professional like or not new professional but like a new like i keep saying entrepreneur but it's like it's true like technically you are um a lot of it comes down to like even business sense and yeah a lot of it is just like network marketing yourself really what route are you gonna go the less people you know, the heavier handed you have to be on marketing and, you know, putting yourself on social and stuff like that. Hey Zanon, how you doing? One of your- oh, surgery? Oh, I- well, I hope he gets better. Or whoever, they- I hope they get better. <laughs> yes, Ian, I know, I know. Wait, uh, sorry, I already saw that, I already saw that, sorry. Um, I'm all over the place. Uh, oh yeah. Hey, Rai, how are you? Uh, which tablet? Save up for a tablet with display. Oh, okay. So if you're... Okay, so the only reason why I was able to afford this is because it went on sale for 50... Almost 50% 50 off on Amazon during the Christmas break. And I was just like, instant buy. Like, I don't know if it was a mistake or something, because I've never seen a Cintiq go on sale for that much. Um... But like this model is normally like over 2000 Canadian. Like I don't, I, I love it, but I don't recommend it to most people because it is just like a really heavy price point. And so for something like sculpting, you don't, it's not necessary. It's not necessary, it's a frill. So what I have here is a frill. Uh, I could eat, I could get by, I could keep getting get by with a non-screen tablet, such as like an Intuos Pro Medium. Like that is my favorite non-display tablet. I've been using it for a while. But in terms of display tablets, there's other brands that are cheaper. Um, like a Huon or an X, X Pen, I think it is, XP Pen. I, I can't vouch for their effectiveness. I've heard people say they're really good and they're a lot cheaper. So keep that in mind as well. But I, I don't know if you wanna, if you wanna like jump into like a multi thousand dollar tablet. Um, if it's like, I, I don't know if it's your first one or whatever. Cause if it's your first one, I do, no, don't do that <laughs> unless you're rich. <laughs> Yes, true, Roy, true. There's, it's actually kind of amazing how many people I've met through stream. Like if you stream, um, that's another way of getting yourself out there, right? When I say put yourself on socials, um, you know, other, other professionals will start to see your work 
And a lot of the time, like, you know, on ArtStation, for example, producers for shows, they're sneaky, you know, they're sneaky. They don't, they don't usually, not all of them have accounts on ArtStation. They're just, they're sneaky, you know? Or they'll have one of those like accounts where it doesn't say anything about them. They'll just, you'll just have like a random profile add you with like no follows or whatever. They're sneaky and they're out there and they're scouting. I, I'm telling you that they're scouting because I've been contacted through ArtStation by producers before um, like a handful of times. So it's like, that's, it's, they're sneaky, they're sneaky. So it's not a bad thing to have, you know, your stuff on social and be updating that with your personal work. And I think a, another like common misconception is just sort of this idea that um, you need to have like a whole bunch of studio work in your portfolio in order to be a successful freelance artist. Like I no, you don't like you don't you don't really need to do that at all. Um, in fact, you can have like a full personal portfolio if it is if your work like holds up well enough um, And be totally good for freelancing that way. So there isn't necessarily like this uh, Like oh, you need X amount of XP to work here when you're a freelancer as long as your work holds up um, And you're quoting reasonably then You should be good. You should be pretty good but keep in mind that when you're working as a freelance artist like work comes and goes you know like it's it's rare for it to be like a constant thing you're gonna have like like you're gonna have times where you just don't have anything to do <laughs> for a month and in that case i'm hoping for for your sake that you know you've saved up pretty well if you've saved up, then you don't have to worry too much. This is like, you know, you, you're essentially being a chipmunk when you're a freelance artist. You're just like a squirrel getting ready for hibernation. Like, when's, when's the dry spell gonna come? <laughs> Loper! Sneaky producers. Very sneaky. Oh, nice. There you go. Yeah, if your Pro XP Pen tablet is working good for you, like, then there's no need to spend, like, thousands of dollars on a tablet like this unless, like, unless, like, you have a bunch of work coming in, you've been doing this for a while, and you're like, it's time to treat myself nice and give myself a very juicy, very lovely business expense <laughs> tax write-off. <laughs> movies or games, which one, if so? Uh, so movies and TV shows. Yes. Am I from Trice? Oh, no, 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 Sculpt, okay, sorry. The ads don't like show up properly in uh, in the restream thing. My apologies if I if I call out something that isn't directed at me. I'm not trying to be self-centered. I swear. <laughs> I just like the ads are very uh very subtle in restream. Also on the on the note of like you know sharing networking and things like that. Always feel free in these streams to share your work with like people in the chat. That's totally cool. That is a-okay with me. I think it's a super great way to meet friendos. 
people who are into the same kind of art as you. make this longer Like I was saying, big gestures. We like big, big gestures. My name is Ashley NDA Cubed. Wow. <laughs> Literally, it's so obnoxious. Like, I honestly, I wish I could tell you guys exactly what it was that I'm working on. I know how obnoxious it sounds. It no I know. I know. Okay, I know. I get it. I can't. I can't because a lot of my work is pre-production, meaning I'm doing stuff before things are even fully greenlit. I'm, I'm pitching, like, concept sculpts to clients of clients essentially right like they're trying to get more funding they're trying to get projects greenlit or whatever that's that's like me being like look don't you want this look at how great it could look in 3d don't you want this like that's that's what i'm that's like my whole shtick <laughs> hopefully that makes sense how have i been i've been good i've been i've been just I'm busy but like good <laughs> busy is good busy busy is good Yes, it distracts from the void. <laughs> you can't talk about the software projects you work on. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Even the projects where I'm like, oh, yeah, this is like, if I ever get on like a contract where I'm just kind of like, it's sort of run of the mill, like easy stuff to do. That that's even when I'm like, oh, what the heck? I wish I could just like talk about this, or if it's like a, a an IP that already exists, it's like, nah, <laughs> it already exists. I want to talk, but then it's yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Let's see. Let's do a save because we haven't saved at all. We like to live dangerously. Um, life is boring otherwise, you know? Let's see here. I'm like really living dangerously today. I've got my, my cup like right, right here. For shame. For shame. Just finished one of your commission designs for war games. Nice! And you got paid! Somebody. Somebody. Somebody's becoming. Somebody's got like. Somebody's got that client portfolio. What? 
<laughs> you know, like how you see some, um, fr like you know, professional freelance companies or studios, like they they've got like a list of like clients at the bottom. It's like Disney or like Mattel, and you know, they've got all these logos. It's like you start making you start making your own little your own little website and just you know, war games. <laughs> Uh, that's every time I get like a new contract. I'm always just like Can I like <laughs> a new 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 client new client new client, you know, it's sort of like stickers collecting stickers Congrats though, that's pretty awesome getting paid is always a always a great thing You know, it should be standard, but we always congratulate when you get that bread should be a standard thing should just happen but you know, <laughs> you know how it is as an artist. Not everybody thinks that you need to eat. They think we live off of our tears and our blood and our sweat. You know? I think all we need to do is be exposed. So I'm glad you got paid. No, name is NDA. Aw. <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna like dynamash some stuff. Let's see. Let's save and We'll get into we'll try like something really low res first like 20 because we don't like I don't know How big this is okay, so that's 500 as well So we can do something like 60 to get like a couple million million or so Just means that it's gonna take triple the amount of time to dynamesh this there we go three million good so now we've got a whole bunch of polygons to work on you see this so all of this stretching has turned into some solid stuff right and you can sculpt on it super fun super great because now we can do all kinds of really cool stuff on top of this so we've got that overall shape right and now on top of that overall shape we can do like the real sculpting so it's like it's literally like you know using your pen to draw on top of the sketch lines that's what we're doing stay hungry <laughs> shem plu jokes on you i'm always hungry anyway so <laughs> insatiable live off of rainbow tears just just streaks of paint running down our our cheeks you know Stream title on Twitch is the presenter from you. I I know, but I can't like hold on. Let me see if I can change it on Twitch. I don't think I can change it on YouTube. I might be able to change it on Twitch. Hold on, let me see. Let me see. What do we normally call this? Uh what's my title normally? <laughs> What's my- hold on, I gotta go and see what my title is normally. Let me see if I can change this. My title is- yeah, I normally- let me see! I sound like such a- like such a dick. I don't know what my title normally is. Creature and character concept sculpting? Creature- I, I'm so stupid. Okay. Sure. Wait. How do I do this? Let me see. Uh... Does that work? Restream gave me a, a trophy. <laughs> I don't need the quotes. Whatever. The quotes are gonna be there because we, we're not like legit, right? We're just we're, we just mess things around. We're not legit. We're just creature and character concept sculpting, you know? Creature and characters concept. Yeah. Just being like extra suggestive for no reason.
Okay, you need a bigger unicorn horn, my friendo. Give me more unicorn horn. More. More. Beautiful. I'm a creature. Yes. <laughs> I'm a freak. <laughs> I'm also I'm Ashley Adams. <laughs> cringe worthy. Like, actually, though, hired my entire life is a cringe ball. So, people who like watching this stream enjoy it. Enjoy it. They, they enjoy the cringe. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> Always active silhouette really helpful. Yeah, I also, I really enjoy having that silhouette in the corner there because, you know, you can see exactly what you're working on. Right here, this thing, it looks like a wee wee and we don't want wee wees. No, so no more wee wee. We noticed that it looked like a wee wee because of the tiny little thumbnail in the screen so we don't want our creatures to have just like i mean depends on the context and everything but i don't want to put a wee wee on him so we don't even know if it's a him i don't want it to be a him so it's like i mean to be fair like the wee wee was coming out of his like hip bone so it's not really a wee wee We oui, we. Oui. Well, I, the French chef would still not have those like yeses coming out of his hip bones. Like it's not that wouldn't happen. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. Spiky boy, this is spiky boy. All right, so more gesture can happen. I'm gonna do stuff like this, I think. I'm gonna open up um, the front leg space. I want that silhouette to read a little bit better. So I like making like these connections to um, just kind of like pulling, pulling the skin, creating some extra tissue connections. So it's not just like, oh, here's a, here's this like leg, but doesn't have any like tendons attaching it to the body <laughs> or anything. I use it as like a design element at the same time. And it helps with flow overall. Yeah, the beard shield! Beard shield! Kind of like the, the, what's it, like the Pokemon sword and shield. Does the sword and sword, or the shield guy from Pokemon sword and shield, I don't know, what, what's that thing's called? I don't know what the recent Pokemon are called, like what are they named? Like, there's too much, there's too many Pokemon now. Um, 
po Pokemon Pokemon Shield. <laughs> Pokemon Shield dog. It's a dog, right? Look like the Shield guy? No, it doesn't look like him. Oh, he has like a. Oh, his like neck fluff is a shield. Eh. Am I am I am I testing? I can't talk about it if I was. I did uh, beta testing a few years back for different versions, and I remember when I was doing it then. Like, if anybody's beta testing for 2021, they can't talk about it. So there's not really like any point asking any of the uh, the artists that stream here if they're beta testing for 2021 because they can't talk about it. NDA, you know how it is. <laughs> Total face shield. Like actually, he's protecting everything. This is what you don't want to do when you're wearing your face shield slash mask out in public. Is protect everything except for the respiratory holes <laughs> you got that pokemon shield dog yeah dog no dog i heard you like that's such an old meme oh my god that's like the beginning of the intro not actually that's a little older Came across the best Twitch channel. The host was trying to explain a Wii Wii placement. Not like, I mean, like, I mean, if you went to like anybody's channel and they started looking at Wii Wii's, I mean, you probably shouldn't be looking at Wii Wii's if you're like streaming, you know, like that's probably like not a good thing. But if you were like looking at incorrectly placed Wii Wii's on your art, you'd probably want to like talk about why it's, I don't know. I'm gonna stop saying Wii Wii, it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. I'm too much. I'm being cringy again. I'm sorry. 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 Do I like this? I don't know. How long have I had that Cintiq? Uh, less than a year. I've had it for, yeah, like less than a year. Half a year? Uh, I think. Half a year. Seems right. <clears throat> Pretend I'm French. Can't do that. I've been trying for a couple of years now. It's not working. Not. I'm very bad at French. <laughs> I wish I was better. I wish I could like pick up languages easily. It's like an actual bane of mine is talking. If you can't tell by these streams, I have a, <laughs> a very hard time talking in general. I say that almost every stream. It's like, hey, don't judge me. I can't talk properly. <laughs> Quickie. Let's do an overall gesture pass. What you guys say? Does anybody want to do some gesture? I do. I want to do some gesture. I want to, and so therefore we will. Transpose and T pose. Let's do it. Hell yes. So now we're in T pose mode, which means all the sub tools are crammed into one temporarily. I bought it for Christmas. Wait, did I? Like earlier than Christmas. It was like, it was like October or November? No. Oh, I don't know. When did I get this? <laughs> I'm going crazy. I don't know anymore. I've been inside for so long. I just don't know what the timelines are. Anyways, transpose. Um, Transpose, or not transpose, uh, T-pose mode temporarily makes your mesh into one subtool, and then you can start to muck stuff around like so and give it that gesture pass, which is 
very fun, very necessary. Now Anger. There we go. And whoop! Too much. Too much. Too much. No. That scared me. That did the very big scare. Okay, let's pull some of this guy back. An e a cubed T pose emote or snake. <laughs> oh, that would be cute, like a little like an act, like a little snake, but it's in the shape of like a fish hook or something. When I navigate around the model, am I just using my keyboard? Yeah, I don't have a, a, like anything fancy. I mean, the Cintiq has like a whole bunch of buttons that I never touch. It's neglected very much. I just focus on the screen. <laughs> Um, everything else is on my keyboard, just because like the keyboard's super easy to use for me, anyways. But if you have stuff available to you, use it. I just don't have any of that. The last month has been a hell of a yeah. It's <laughs> the last month has been a hell of a decade. It's been a lot. Like I have to limit my Twitter time every day because it's just too much. You know what I mean? Like, there's just, there's just so much. And I'm in Canada, but for whatever reason, all I get is, like, states news, and I just can't, like, I forget. I forget sometimes because I'm on Twitter so much and I'm just not in the outside world anymore because, hi, welcome to pandemic, I guess, that I forget that I'm, that I'm in Canada sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. It's wild. It's wild. It's wrong. Bro, the states need to chill. I'm so sorry for you guys down there. What is going on? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to start. I don't want to start a conversation about it. I'm just. I'm sorry. That's all. What other programs do I use? Um, answered this earlier, but for those who didn't hear, I also use Keyshot and Photoshop for my conceptual pieces, and um, for uh, full models, I will go through a pipeline using uh, ZBrush Maya and Substance as well as Photoshop occasionally. Those are usually the only ones that I need. But I'm I'm not in games, right? If I were, like other people use Marmoset or you know Unreal for presentation purposes. I don't I don't I don't have to because I, I'm in animation. I use everything? No, I don't. I don't use everything. I use what's necessary. You don't you don't need to use everything. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know what you need to know in order to get your stuff done. As long as you can get your stuff done and it looks good, then you shouldn't worry. Unless like, you know, the studio is using a very specific set of rule or a set of tools and you're getting hired on for a very like specific project that needs you to follow suit 
in that pipeline like for example like you're you're hired onto a live game you can't just be doing willy nilly you have to follow their specific pipeline because it's, it's a live game and they've got everything already you know set up for you so you have to follow oh if you're using maya you have to use maya yeah I am only curious if now nah, I don't want to do that actually I lied but maybe a little bit of that wait maybe and then like because I like this idea of like this entire thing kind of like curving like like a continuous like curve here I'll probably leave a little bit of that in And it would generate a nice spec as well if you were to render it. That's something to consider as well as if you're going to render this out. Um, to consider putting noise on things that maybe you wouldn't consider having noise on or, you know, giving something a curve, a slight like curvature or something like that, because, uh, you know, how, how this how how light hits your model and bounces off is going to help the viewer understand what it is that it's looking at. So to give more visual interest, it's nice to add a little bit of like depth to your shapes. So leaving this straight would have given a very flat, almost like mirror appearance, like a very like, here's a glass pane kind of thing um, because it's more organic. It's nicer to have a little bit more of like a, you know, a curve so that the light actually like falls off a little bit nicer. So those are those are some nice things to think about. Um, noise is another one. So if you're you know exporting this for uh, any any of your models, unless you're talking about like something super stylized where it needs to be nice and clean like that, if you're doing like creature design or anything of that nature. It's nice to put like some sort of a surface noise on it. Um, it doesn't always have to be like you know meticulously placed either. If you're doing something more conceptual, like really quick, you can just put like an overall surface noise to give a little bit of grain and um, depth and sort of oomph to your quick renders. So it doesn't look so like like if it's not supposed to be metallic, it doesn't look metallic, right? I, I, act, I do. I use notepad so much. Like, I have the ability to use, like, word and everything, but, like, I just notepad. Like, <laughs> uh, same with, like, Microsoft Clipping Tool. I use the Clipping Tool so much. <laughs> Boss creature for Monster Hunter. I would, I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it looks like a, like a, a little bit more of, like, a, a juiced up Pokemon. Just, just juiced, you know, like a just a like absolute thick boy of a Pokemon. I'm still not like completely sold on it. I'm kind of trying to figure out how I'm gonna maybe these guys like I don't know. Wait, let's let's do something like super obvious. I want to try something super obvious. Like you can do something like yeesh. <clears throat> let's do an inflate backwards. Wow, that's not gonna do anything. Just something like this because it's so big. Well, oh. And then it just disappeared. Just didn't want to. Let me inflate you backwards. Probably could have done this when you were tinier. But I decided that I wanted pain. I'm gonna delete this. I don't like it. 
<laughs> bye bye. Let's try again. Solo. Hello. Wait, what am I doing? Oh, we're still in. Um, we're still in T pose. I shouldn't be adding things. I might have screwed us. I might have screwed us real good. We'll see. Let's go back to sub T. No, we're still okay. Because ZBrush can figure that out. Now we can add. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Solo and frame you. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Inflate down to like this. There we go. Like I wanted to do something like pretty obvious, so like this. And then kind of like lay around with the shapes based on that outer shape. You feel? Okay. Here, just for just for funs, let's give it like one of these. Wow. <laughs> the legendary Pokemon Swole, bro. <laughs> Ow. Would you catch it? Would you want one of these in your party? I don't know. What about Marvelous Designer? I don't actually use Marvelous Designer because I'm in uh, animation most of my contracts. Um, and it's faster to sculpt Scott stylized clothing that way than use Marvelous. Uh, some some instances I've used Marvelous before, but it really isn't part of my main pipeline at all. Um, Marvelous I would use for blocking out uh, more realistic clothing. If you're doing something stylized, you should you shouldn't bother with it unless it is more along the lines of realism. Like, if it's closer to, like, you're gonna need a lot of realistic folds, then use Marvelous. Did I go to school for art? Yes. Yeah, I went to, initially, like, in high school, I didn't have any, like, electives or anything. I was part of, like, a fine arts program. Hated it. Hate, hated it. <laughs> and then uh, I went to animation school for 2D animation. Decided I didn't want to be an animator. Now I'm sculpting. So, I like this. I like this one. This one, I didn't learn this in school, but I like this. This is good. I learned other art things in school, though. Show my workflow on different sessions? Potentially. I don't know. Streaming takes a lot out of, like, just my energy in general. And I know that sounds really, like, obnoxious as well. But it is. It's, like, a lot of talking and, uh and thinking about what I'm gonna say at the same time as like actually working and conceptualizing something. So when it comes to like an entire workflow, like, you know, taking something from start to finish, I just feel like because of how long, you know, that would take, maybe like, it may be like spread over a bunch of sessions. There's, there are other artists on here that do specifically that. So if you want to check out like other people doing like full workflows, they're like Pixelogic's got a bunch of that on uh, their YouTube channel. Wait, wait. I muted before I sneezed. There we go. I did it. Ah. But yeah, there's like a there's a bunch of really really awesome artists on here that go through their their entire process, not just on ZBrush stuff. I just like sketching on stream, you know. 
And it's another one of those things too where like like I know I know some people are very interested in my process in particular, which is cool. However, um I don't I also don't think that me going through that with every session or even just like a couple of sessions is super useful to everyone because there is like a lot of information on this stream like from other presenters that go through stuff anyways so i don't i just don't want to be redundant and like repeating the same information i don't know maybe that's stupid maybe i'm being stupid i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know i also just want to have fun i don't know sorry All right, I'm going to dynamesh this again, quickly save. Uh, oh. Give it... Ooh, that might be too much. Mm. We'll see. Final Fantasy or Legendary Pokey? Yeah, I know, it's kind of like a mix between those two. We'll see what it turns out to be, no idea. Do I feel like progress through the years of your sculpting? Absolutely, yeah, hundred um, percent. It's 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 crazy because until you really like look at things side by side, it can be hard to see that there is progression. Oh, here we go. So when the Swiss cheese thing happens like this, I'm sure some of you guys have actually had this error happen. This is because you have too much like non-manifold geo. So because of all of the um, inflating that I was doing, a lot of the uh, you know the geometry kind of got all messed up and essentially it's not tangible geometry anymore in certain areas and so when that happens dynamesh kind of freaks out and it's just like what exactly are you trying to get me to calculate here and then it does this instead as a passive aggressive remark to you being like you know i just handle my mess and it's just like you know what i'm not cleaning up after you anymore and so you're like okay okay relax fine we don't i don't want to fight with you honey and so instead of fighting with your husband you control Z. And you go down to geometry, mesh integrity, you check the mesh integrity, you see what the problem is, your spouse tells you, 2028 faces with multiple references. You're like, okay, okay, I see where you're coming from. And then you, you ask them what else, and then they're like, well, there's also 26,000 edges that are shared by more than one, <laughs> more, than, more than two polygons, and you're like, I'm gonna try and be a better person. I'm really sorry that I did this to you. And then you start to move on. And the way that you move on is by clicking fix mesh. Wow, your relationship after mesh integrity test is completely successful is solved. And you have a wonderful life together because now, now you can dynamesh and it'll be fine. <laughs> Watch it, I'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> And we don't need therapy. See, see, apologies are powerful. Absolutely, absolutely powerful. Embrace the power of apologies and you will get a successful, successful result. It's all good. You're great. All right. Beautiful. I thought words just came out sometimes sometimes they do sometimes they do sometimes I'm like like the beginning of the stream I was like oh my god I don't know what to talk about but then you, then you just get in the flow of it and then things just like kind of like vomit out of my mouth like words just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the subject to that cringe. Uh, I guess some people like it because you're still around, but to everybody else, I'm sorry. I am the way that I am. <laughs> Okay, 
right, let's do... This is the uh, slash two brush, by the way. And I love it. I love the slash two brush. Joker. Hey, Heaven. Oh, wrote Marvelous Designer and which stage are... Yeah, I already answered that one. That, that I said basically if you want to use Marvelous Designer, make sure that it's like something that is more on the... I, I would say I would recommend more realistic side. If you're doing stylized clothes, like a heavily stylized clothes, you don't need to use Marvelous Designer. It's more of like something to quickly block in initial clothing so then you can then, you know, sculpt on top of it and take it further for your production. I, you know, some people go all the way with Marvelous. Like they, they do like make sure that the sim is like really high quality and Marvelous. They spend like days in it. I don't see, like, unless you're doing something like super high on VFX that needs like that hyper realism, Marvelous, I would say you would use it in the earlier stages and then work it into your model and sculpt afterwards. But it really just depends on your, uh, your pipeline, who you're working for, exactly what the, you know, the project is. When you start to use different programs is highly specific, it's highly dependent on the project that you're working on slash the studio that you're working for. Hey, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to put up with me to see Monty. It's true, it's true. I know no one's here for me. No one's here for me. No one's here for the sculpts. Everyone's here for Monty. Monty boy. Hey Quiblade, how are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Like, look how fun this is. Look how fun slash two is. I love Slash too. Wee. Oops. All right. I think. 
think what I'm gonna do is take, oops, I'm gonna actually like take this off because I want some more resolution on the face, but I don't want us like, like I really don't wanna, um, what was I gonna say? Oh no. Uh, like I don't, I don't wanna like give everything lots of resolution, right? So I'm just gonna take this off of here. Me thinks. I'm gonna save first, just in case. Bling! Uh, split. Now, might scream at me. We might be fighting again. What is a slash two tool? Uh, the slash two tool, it, it, it's it's a brush and you can find it in um, the light box in the brush menu. It's a lot of fun to use. It essentially just kind of, it's like Damien standard except like sharper. So what it's doing is creating one flat edge and something that goes down. So it's like creating sort of like a scaling that happens. It's like a, a flat ridge. And I think I froze ZBrush. We fought again. We fought again. Um, let me just let me just try that again. That that's my bad. <laughs> eh. Spring. Sorry about that. All right. That's why we save before we do anything crazy. <laughs> yeah, we, we fought a little bit. We're good now. We're good now. All right, so perhaps, perhaps what we want to do instead Not this. I'm gonna keep, wait, actually, I'm gonna just like grab this in, in, in particular. That's all I really need. That's what I wanted to do right here. And then everything else is fine. Anything else I don't care about. Okay, split. This one will be better. It'll, it'll just be better. I promise it'll be better. I can't promise that. I think it'll be better. We do like an inflate. Go. Boom. Nice. Now this guy. Save. No, three. No, hello. I would like to save. There we go. All right. And give this. This is at one mil. Give it 120. Do I work out of my imagination? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I definitely do. Because it's fun. Um, if I am working uh, on a professional thing, though, like for client, then I usually have references. It's going. What's up with you? Do I have? Hmm. Okay. What's going on here? Eh. Anyways. There we go. Mute. That's what I want. But
Oh, yeah, sorry. Somebody had asked before about um, progress uh, over the years. Yes, I have recognized over the years of streaming, specifically, if you compare, like, the stuff that I did on the Pixelogic channel to, like, when I first started to, like, how much that I can get done just in terms of, like, quality of stuff as well, there has definitely been an improvement. It's hard to see that, though, unless you do the side-by-sides, which is what I was trying to say before um, I started fighting uh, with uh, my friend here. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can definitely see that there is uh, an improvement, and I think a lot of that comes down to speed because I've just been doing it for a while. That things are just a lot like they just feel like they're a lot faster. Is there certain refs that I use? Uh, Google. <laughs> I, I use pure ref, right? And then I just like Google the things that I want. Like, let's say I'm doing something more based on like a lizard. I will literally Google the like lizards and try and find some that are like different species that are specific to maybe like what I'm trying to do. Like if I want that like freaky, like, you know how like lizards have like that front hand that just goes like yeet to the side and it doesn't know how like its own bones work. Then I'll just gather a whole bunch of like iguana references and stuff like that, and I'll just shove it onto pure ref. I don't, when I say a whole bunch, I actually don't mean a whole bunch. I don't mean like a hundred different references. What I mean is you want to like be referencing smart. So try and find different angles of the thing that you're looking for. Don't try and like jam like a hundred different images on because it'll distract you from what you really want to do I find um, get some like get something really high res get something like you know maybe two or three images in different positions so that you can kind of see exactly like you know different angles of the same subject matter so you can see exactly like how it works but you don't need like 70 different images of like an iguana foot if you're doing iguana stuff right find the like less can and sh is more a lot of cases Hey Chris, how are you? Yeah, you've been designing and learning for six years. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's it's hard it's hard to see it until you do the side by sides. But when you do the side by side, you're like, yo, what's what is good? What is up? Okay, maybe I should keep doing this. <laughs> I think I want to give this guy
Eh. Get that. Curve. Curves. There we go. Got a little... A little something something. When I work in a project, do I do it in silence completely or play a movie or music? Uh, my work environment. Oh, yeah, I'm always listening to music. Always, always listening to music. Unless like I'm like ultra super crazy stressed, then I will do it in in silence, and I'll be like crazy like thinking, like how I can get things done as fast as possible. If I'm working in silence, though, it is. It is because I'm heckin' stress. But if not, then music is is the way to go. Didn't even realize what I was doing. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna uh, start dynamishing the rest of this stuff. Do I do humanoids in the same aspect? Studied human anatomy. Yes, yes I do. Yeah, most of the time, actually for work, I know it's like stylized and for animation, um, but I do humans all the time. Like that is my job, is a lot of human characters. A lot of stuff I can't show you. NDA, I know, it's obnoxious, it's so obnoxious. Um, but humanoid creatures, yeah, I have, I've got a bunch of humanoid creatures that I do. Uh, usually, like, you know, like I, I, Doing like straight up and down human bodies for me, like unless unless like there's something super character to it, like you know, and there's like a lot of gesture and stuff, I don't find it super entertaining. You know, like just or interesting is just doing like default anatomy studies, like where you're just doing like an up and down person. If I'm doing like an anatomy study, it'll be on a project. Like like a, a sketch of a creature or something like that that I will have already started that I'm really into. Like let's say it'll have a human torso, like or something more human to it. Then I'll have images of humans up. I'll have my um, censored boy here, you know, that sort of a thing. And I'll be able to learn more effectively because I'm interested in the subject matter. If I was just gonna do like a realistic human up and down. I feel like it's it's hard. It's like it, that feels like a grind, right? Because you're not really adding a lot of character to it. You're not really like it's just an up and down human thing. Unless you're into like medical sort of cadavers or like making like a medical um, illustration or something like that. Which if you are, all the power to you. Uh, then it's not going to be like super super interesting. It's going to be hard to retain that information. Do I theme the music to what you're working on or just playlist it? A lot of the time I just playlist stuff, but I do have a specific um, playlist that I just save like certain songs that I come across. Like if I'm if I'm particularly jamming out to something while I'm working, I'm like, okay, you go in like you go in this playlist for like when I really want like every single song to be a banger. <laughs> hey Heiko, how are you? Yeah, if you want to if, if you want to make an egg crochet and you're actually like interested in that, then it's a very good way to learn anatomy. However, I'm being I'm just trying to be as real as possible with you here. And you know, if you've tried that already and it's and you're finding it's really hard to have certain bits of what you're what you're learning stick, it might just simply because be because it's not your way of learning now not everybody 
learns well through memorization and grinding, right? You know, like when I was in school, um, being given like, you know, a ton of stuff to memorize for like a history exam or something like that, no, like count me out. Like that was a grind. Like you can't, you can't get me to grind on stuff like that, right? So the stuff that I was more able to learn and contain information was more like problem solving stuff, not as much copying, you know what I mean? So if I had to access other parts of my brain at the same time, I found it was easier to retain different information, which was in really interesting. So maybe if you're having troubles with things like, you know, just doing an et crochet or a human up and down and just like copying from like photos of humans up and down, which is a very good way to study human anatomy. But if you're having trouble with it, even then, I would say try and perhaps do something more gestural, right? Find some gesture drawings, uh, gesture figure work where it has more action, right? Because then these are, these. it's gonna be more challenging. Don't get me wrong on that. It's going to be more challenging. However, you're gonna be using like different parts of your brain at the same time. You're gonna be trying to figure out how to piece things together. So you might end up with like, a worse result, but you might also come out with more tips that you wouldn't have otherwise picked up on because things are in motion, things are active, right? The muscles are active. So it really just, it really depends on how you learn and if you're, if you're more of like that hands-on sort of like problem solver, like you need that in, in order to re re retain information then I would recommend um, learning your anatomy and learning your creature anatomy and things like that based on the projects that you do rather than just like grind, 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 grind. Like I see things on, now I don't know if this is necessarily something, I think some people might think that me saying something like this to, um, you know, young artists might be a little bit like, you know, in quotes damaging, but I see like comments on, uh, you know 10,000 hours or whatever where people are like don't attempt something like a likeness sculpt until you've actually gone through and done facial anatomy over and over again and I, ha I have a little bit of a problem with that right because not everybody learns the same way um so by telling somebody not to attempt a likeness sculpt until they understand like actually how the, the head works is a little bit short-sighted in my opinion and it, it kind of unfortunate right because you want it to be fun you want it to be engaging so if the person you know if you, you if anybody if i were interested in likeness sculpting and that's what i wanted to do i would encourage the person to keep doing that likeness sculpting right that's what that's what i'm trying to get at is you can learn that human anatomy like the the face anatomy by doing that likeness sculpting. So you shouldn't gatekeep for yourself different types of artwork um, based on the fact that, oh, I don't know human anatomy yet, so I shouldn't do this yet. I don't think that that's right. I think the better way of look, this is, this is my opinion, okay? So my opinion is that you should do those things that you're interested in, definitely, because you're gonna retain the information a lot more because you're excited about it. Um, but you should learn how to reference properly. That's the key. Reference for these projects properly, and you will it, 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 you'll you'll retain information so much better than if you were to just do like skull skull grind grind grind. Some people some people need that, right? I'm not saying that this works for everyone, but if you were doing like this is how I learn is okay. I have a um, fish a man fish person. What am I gonna look up? Okay, well, he has a human-like torso. He's got fish fins and a fish head. Well, then I'm gonna get a couple of really good images of fish that I like, that I want this to be based off of. Have that up on the screen. Think about the skull, right? Like the bone structure of that fish. Have that up on the screen, but have it in different angles so I can start to make sense. Problem solve as I'm sculpting it. Problem sculpt. Uh, problem solve the sculpt, you know, learning the different angles at the same time 
as I'm creating something that I'm interested in. So I'm problem solving. I'm not just copying. I'm problem solving at the same time. And I find that that helps me. So if the grind way of doing things, which is what I, I find a lot of people, you know, just gatekeeping for themselves and saying, I can't, can't do the fun thing because I haven't gotten there yet. Um, if that, that grinding isn't working for you, stop gatekeeping, right? Start to do some projects here and there that are really fun for you and try your best to learn how to reference properly. And I mean that by you're not having a hundred images up, you're having key images up. Key, very specific ones. And don't beat up on yourself when things don't look super good. You know, you just gotta, you, you just gotta keep doing things that you're interested in and you're gonna get there. Ooh, it's really hot in here. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and you know, if you want to be an artist, a lot of it does come down to your emotion. Um, it's a very personal thing, right? And so when you take the personality out of art, when you take the fun out of it, when you take the expression out of it, it becomes a chore. And I feel like it can really like deter a lot of beginner artists from doing like the sculpt work from actually learning from wanting to do more and i think the key thing is especially in like the early stages of getting into any kind of a hobby is to fuel that feeling of success that feeling of fun so that you want to keep doing more so when you hear people saying like oh you shouldn't be doing this because you haven't gotten to this stage yet unless it's something like you're practicing to become a doctor like, artwork, I don't think should be gatekeep like that. That's my opinion. And take that with a grain of salt, right? But I think that it's, uh, it's, it's something worthy to think about. I think one of the most valuable skills you can have um, and, and develop is honestly the skill to like how learn how to look look up things like research finding reference is is a big one and that's usually how i learn different softwares as well like it's not really like limited to um anatomy or anything like that how I learn different softwares and learn different workflows and you know different pipelines, things like that, is I, I will I will usually find like d make a project for myself. Like here, do something simple. Like I want to make a barrel. So okay, but I want to make a barrel using this program I've never used. Like let's say Z it was ZBrush. Well, then now I have this very specific project, I can look up specific things. Like, let's say I didn't know how to do a wood texture. Oh, well, then now I have something specific to look up and learn. And now that's a new tool set, you know, that's in, in my roster. So I like to learn new softwares that way rather than, you know, anything else, because it like in the end of the day like you just need to know what you need to know to get the thing done to look good right i think uh, that's a, that's also another misconception is oh yeah if i if i need to know zbrush i need to know everything about Z you don't you don't you don't like like i can tell you right now i am not like a master at array mesh i won't touch array mesh with a 10 foot pole because i keep messing up i keep forgetting how to use it so i don't use array mesh i don't need it right so just stuff like that um in Maya, I don't know how to use everything in Maya either. I just know what I need to know to get the job done. And if I come across a project or if I'm working with a studio that needs me to do a very specific thing, then I have a specific goal to learn a new tool in that. <clears throat> do I ever model 
the skeletal muscular structure to help with humanoids. Um, not the skeletal system. Sometimes, uh, you know, I, I will make muscle markers underneath. I think the last time I did like a, a, a muscle human, like, like a skeletal under thing was sort of when I was doing uh, like that grind study stuff. So that's not really like something that I I do a lot of. <laughs> the way that I approach a lot of design is um, from the same sort of like standard that I do with, you know, figuring out design and animation. And, and that'll be quite literally breaking down different shapes into or different silhouettes of different like complex shapes into simplified shapes and that's where you, you can probably see in a lot of my designs is very like heavy-handed like my shapes are very like heavy-handed so when it comes to like putting a skeletal system underneath like i would not ever think of you know putting a whole rib cage underneath what i'm doing just because i feel like I'm not doing hyper realistic stuff. If you if that's your goal of doing hyper realistic stuff, then it's it's worth studying that kind of thing. Um, but if you're doing things where there's a little bit more forgiveness, then you can generalize and be like, okay, well, the overall shape of the uh, the the rib cage is sort of like this round rounded cylinder. Right, with like a, a cut in between and the sides of the ribs go like this and in the back it attaches to a rib like a, a spine you know you can generalize with very like you know general shapes right and you can get the same uh, result Honestly, the key to all of this is to just just do a lot of it, you know? Do a lot of what you like and you'll get better at it as long as like you're trying to actively learn to make every single piece past the one that you just did better and better and better, then you're gonna get better. Like if you're just kind of like doing it, but doing it mindlessly, then you might stagnate. Like you have to be thinking, right? Actively trying to make it better and better and better. don't give up because if you give up then like you know you can't get anywhere if you give up if you keep going you're getting somewhere but the, that really is the key though is like working a little bit more on the smart side so if something is not working for you and you've been doing it for like you know a while when I say a while I mean like you've been trying the same method for like, uh, I don't know, multiple pieces that you've done and it's just, it's not clicking, things are not sticking, then you might want to check out what other people do and maybe try a different method and maybe that will stick with you. Because the way that I learn, the way that somebody else on this stream would say that they learn, they're different, right? And different things for different people. 
not everybody learns the same way and that's sort of a, a big problem in schools as well is just the assumption that everybody should and could learn the same way it's not true stay hungry but don't be like starving right like that's that's the big thing is like don't start hurting yourself over this like this ideology of like i gotta grind i gotta do the art grind i hate that i hate that so much i hate it so much right because it should it has to be fun it really does it has to be fun otherwise you're gonna burn yourself out so you know like you gotta find that balance for yourself like where am I doing projects that I actually enjoy, subject matters that I enjoy, but I'm also actively learning the things that I need to learn, like human anatomy or whatever. Find a way to make human anatomy fun for you to learn. That might just literally be making things gestural, um, looking at old Renaissance paintings. Does that inspire you? Maybe doing uh, anatomy based on like figures like that, you know, looking at more recent things does likeness sculpting inspire you maybe you want to learn that way right so it's there's different ways to learn things you don't have to do a, a t post a crochet of a, a of a person in order to learn these things you just need to be really really sm like you know smart for yourself when it comes to referencing so that's that's it's that's a skill that you're gonna have to learn over time but the best part piece of advice for references that I can give is try not to overwhelm yourself with too many too many pictures because it'll distract from what you need to do and the pictures that you do use try and limit those to a couple of turnarounds like you know like a maybe two different angles for like you know three quarters and maybe a little bit closer like a 15 degrees or something like that give yourself like a straight on and then like you know a profile and maybe an even up top right like i'm giving an example of like if you're doing like something like a skull but it's not too much right like you're not doing you're not getting like 20 pictures of a skull because then you're going to be look looking all over the place it's better to hyper focus on a couple of really good images Looks just like your dog. Your dog looks weird. <laughs> I'm actually gonna make that thicker. Thicken that snicker. Snickers.
What's the ring around the creature? I don't know. I just put it there, um, sort of demonstrating this sort of, uh, like, uh, shape, shape balance, shape harmony that was, that I was trying to achieve earlier. Like, if I were to get rid of this, like, overall, we're going for, like, a, a circle, right? So it feels like everything is kind of contained, even, even if it isn't. Um, just sort of like demonstrating the power of like negative space as well as positive and how they work together. That's what the circle is doing really. You know, and you can, you, if you wanted to be more graphic, you can leave stuff like that in. You don't even have to have it there, but sometimes it's, it's kind of a fun thing, right? Um, a blog entry for every one of the 30 months that you're working on games so far? Nice! Pretty cool! He is a bit husky, if that's what- nice. <laughs> uh, part- I mean, if, if this looks like- looks like a husky, I don't know, man. Huskies I've seen haven't looked this freakish. I can't, like, I can't really, like, tell you, Chris, about the, uh, the 2021 release date, because I have no idea, unfortunately. <laughs> the preview looked pretty freaking cool, though, like, in terms of just, like, having, having, like, even just a little bit of cloth sim in a, uh, in ZBrush, I think, would be really cool. I don't think that anything's going to replace, like marvelous design or anything but i feel like it will it will help the workflow for like like it'll it'll prevent having to like go over to marvelous for example for like i guess something simple like a cape or a tarp or something so i don't know it's pretty cool that's what i think anyways uh muscles cause hunger they do <laughs> are getting near our break yes yeah we we do we do need to get up and take a break actually oh thanks for reminding me um i definitely should do that and this stop that okay i should i should definitely break just setting this guy up Whoops. There we go. Butte. I'm gonna save it. And we're gonna get go and take like a quick break. Where's the BRB? Where's our BRB? There we go. Yeah, I'll be back in uh, a couple of minutes. I'm just gonna walk or, like do a quick stretch and you guys should too because you know, four hour streams, not good for your legs, not good for your circulation to be sitting for so long. So get up, stretch a little, pump your calves, make sure that there's no cooling bloods. We don't like blood clots, blood clots are bad. Um, and then I'll be back in a couple of minutes to finish this guy for another two hours. Yeah? Okay, I'll see you in a bit.
We have a Monty coming to say hi. We have a little Monty. Yes, we do. We have a little Monty. It doesn't allow clickable links? Uh, I guess maybe on YouTube. I think YouTube just has a problem with that in general. If you want to like share links, I think uh, Twitch is fine with it. So if you're on uh, if you're on Twitch, then it, it works pretty well. <laughs> a white German Shepherd? No, Monty's actually a corgi. He's a full corgi, believe it or not. His mom just ran out of printer ink for his head. So the rest of his body, you can see, he's a tricolor corgi, but he just doesn't have any like color on his head except for this one this one ear <laughs> he's a good boy yes yeah if you go to twitch then you can share your links as long as it's appropriate it's all good what's he been doing lately is he getting better with people outside the house yeah the only the only time he'll kind of like freak out at people outside is if they like actively try and pursue him like if they try and like oh they go and then like it, you know reach down and try and like pet him then he's like yo what no don't approach me that's that's like really the only time that he'll be like uh -uh, no i don't like this um but with like people just passing on the street and stuff, like he's he's totally fine with everything. He just doesn't like people approaching him. <laughs> like he won't let anyone else pet him. He's been like that like since a puppy. Like even even when when we first got him, like he was very very timid. He was a very timid dog. So it's just like it's it's a constant process with him. Like just every day is a socialization process with him, but. You know, I think it's just, it's sort of something I've accepted is he just is a timid dog when it comes to like outdoor, he's brave, but he's timid. You know what I mean? Like he'll, he'll try, like he really wants to be a part of things, but he's just scared of a lot of stuff at the same time. Oh no, he hates people in my family. Like anybody who, who he hasn't like been with every single day, he is not a fan of. Except for one other person, like one of our friends, who literally how we got him to be okay with him was, and, and trust me, like people have been coming over to uh, our, our house like since he was a puppy, like interacting with him since he was a puppy, it doesn't matter to him, like we were properly socializing him since he was a puppy, but he just kind of isn't okay with people. <laughs> like he, it, some people aren't people people, so he's just a dog that's not a people person. He has not been mistreated, no, no, no. We got him when he was like 14 weeks old. Um, and even the first day that we got, he was just very timid. Uh, even as a puppy, he's just very timid. Uh, it took us a while to even get him outside on a walk. Like it like took, oh, I'm sorry I said that. <laughs> It took us a while to get him like even outside, but he's he's come a long way. He doesn't freak out at people anymore. Um, 
you know like we do a lot of like it's called care training it's a reactive dog like training he's just he's just got anxiety like that's all it is and so you just have to treat him like a person who has anxiety he's a good boy he's a good boy he's a good boy and he he has not been mistreated or anything like that he gets all of the good loves all of the good hugs <laughs> He's disapproving of this hug though. He wants down, I think. How do I study? Um, earlier, earlier I mentioned that if you want to scrub on the on the stream. Thank you, Shimplu. The do donut tutorial. Yeah, I, uh, that that's that, that was fun. What? All right, loves. Say bye to stream. Bye bye. Bye stream. Oh, there's a good boy. <sighs> Do I ever dance with him? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we... We do silly things all the time. Do crazy stuff all the time. He likes to do parkour outside. Like, on, when, our, when we're on our W's, I say W, um, our stroll... I can't say the word, otherwise he gets kind of, like, excited. Uh, when we're on our strolls, he likes to do like parkour on like benches and like stuff. Like he'll like up, up and down and up and down and he'll go woo. Okay, he likes like obstacle course type stuff. Keeps his brain busy. That's a really big thing too. Like if you ever, like I've never had a reactive dog like this. Um, my other dogs have all just been like lovable doofuses. He's the smartest dog I've ever had. And I think that comes into play with like how anxious and timid and reserved he is about things is because maybe he like overthinks, you know? I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, if you ever have like a reactive dog like this, the best way to handle it from um, my experience is honestly to just, anytime he's reacting to something is distract instead of do anything else, right? Like. Hey, look, I've got a toy over here. Let's go and, like, you know, play with this thing over here. And then eventually he'll associate the thing that he was reacting to, like the scary stimulus with, oh, but, like, I'm going to get to go and play over there if I see this thing, you know? It's just, it's, it's, it's classic counter conditioning, and that's really, like, what we're doing. It's just trying to make every situation as fun as possible. And it works. It definitely works. Microsoft joined the Blender Foundation? What? Really? That's crazy. Hey, Twitch VG. Yeah, <laughs> he loves, uh... Monty, lo Monty loves the camera because he doesn't know that there's a bunch of people like if he could understand that concept he'd probably be like ah absolutely not <laughs> people in my house absolutely not
I want that I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'll leave it. That's fine. Skype's gonna get a donut tutorial after. <laughs> oh my god. Elbow cough. Wow. Hope you're okay. <laughs> what am I making? I don't know. I don't know. Some quadrupedal weird looking thingy m jiggy. I don't really 100% know what this is. I think I need to give it a little bit of like a tail question mark. Like, nothing crazy, but... Maybe something. Maybe something or other. I'm putting it in again. Nah, 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 nah. This is just like a concepting thing. It's for fun. Total for fun. Um, none of this ends up going in like a game or anything, not even printing, like we're literally just having fun with, uh, it's like sketching. Looking like a German Shepherd, my god. Hey Vander, how are you doing? What's the blue ring for? I don't know, it's just there. <laughs> it's, just, it's just there. Everybody doesn't like- You don't like the blue ring? I'll get rid of it. There you go. Blue ring is just sort of like, um... It's like a demonstration of uh, negative and positive space, right? So you can see how the sculpt kind of... Like the, the design kind of- Oh, hello. I didn't- What? What's going on? I don't want that. Uh, the design kind of follows that like circular thing without actually being a circle. It's kind of like balanced, balanced to the circle. There we go. I'm sorry, I have like a hard time talking a lot of the time, I'm sure. I'm so sorry. Mm, uh, language, I am big bad. Doggo, you missed him. Dragon, you missed him. You missed him. Oh, I still have my social stuff. Nobody tells me. Nobody tells me that I still, oh my gosh. Remind me, guys, remind me that my annoying socials are still on the screen taking up space. I gotta get rid of them, otherwise these like YouTube comments get mad at me. I actually don't know if YouTube comments get mad at me. I don't, I don't, I have no idea. I haven't seen any of that. But I assume YouTube comments will get mad at me if I keep my socials up. <laughs> like a slab where it's broken off. I'm like removing all of, like a lot of it. Maybe I shouldn't. I should keep it. Oh well.
<laughs> YouTube comments are perfect. They, they are, aren't they? Okay, you guys are talking. I like that. I like to see that. I think I want to give that a dime mesh. There we go. Dog, cat, insect. Pretty much. Pretty much. Dead on. Literally that. Dog, cat, insect. Cat, dog. Insect. I think it swims. Just, uh, just, just for reference, like sometimes I like to just scribble on top of what I'm doing, just to kind of like give me something fun to work off of. Like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's like, oh, I'll just scribble on here and then like mask an area. And then probably like, Pull it out or something. I'm gonna play around with shim sim sheeps. Sim ships. Sim ships. Shum ships. More like butterfly or a fish. Yes, yes, I see it swimming. Definite swimming. Um... 
You know it'd be cool if it swims with like with like water wings. When I say that it doesn't sound cool, but let me just let me just try and make it sound cool. What do I think of Zebra 2021? I think it's gonna be awesome! That's what I think. I'm excited to play around with it on stream. I don't know if I'm gonna be playing around with it on stream immediately um, when it releases, but hopefully be able to do stuff sooner rather, sooner rather than later. We'll see though. Let's give it a. You're off now. See you, Talon. Have a great rest of your night. Thanks for hanging out. Oh my God, me and my plastic nose. Okay. You're like you. You are you the dude that keeps telling me I have a plastic nose? What in the world? Hey Aprizal, how are you? Love the music. Yeah, it's just like um, some free stuff. And you can listen to it on Pretzel Rocks. It's just like copyright free stuff. It's more like fins, I think, is what, what this is going to be like. Because he's like, he, he will swim. He will, he will swim. No worries, Vander. No worries. Hey, Jordan, what's good? How are you doing? How's it going? Oh, that's way too high res. Give me... In. Actually, I'm gonna do this. Do I even want this is a real question. I don't know if I want it or not. Figure it out in a bit. I don't know yet if I want it. I kind of like it, but I don't know. Hmm. Questions. Answers? More questions. More answers? More questions. Wow. A cycle. Never ending. A haiku. Could help is I 
I did some stuff that took. Yes. Is my height 190 centimeters? I don't know. I don't know. That's such that's very strange to ask. Do I want this? Do I want this? On it. Mm. Mm. Little hands, yeah. I mean, maybe a little face, too. I'm disproportionate. <laughs> Strange looking people, that's what we are. streams I appreciate that yeah I'm not the only one that streams here though if that was if that's what you were saying I am definitely not the only one who streams here there's a lot of really really awesome artists you should check out who streams here they're all super good <laughs> my hands are not no oh my god okay i don't like talking about my appearance that's why my li little screen like my little square is so tiny like i'm here to show you that i'm a human we don't we don't start talking about my appearance we talk about art don't you start using some slick like internet boy thing where you're like but you are art your face is art i swear to god i will instant ban you Hey Optimal, how you doing? Just being sneaky, Just sneaking around. Like, I turned my AC on, the only problem is then you guys, all you would hear is <laughs> So, I must suffer a little bit longer. You just got here? Oh, okay. I thought you were being sneaky. Oh well, I guess I guess optimal isn't sneaky then. No sneaky boy. I get on that RTX mic tech. I keep trying that out for whatever reason. It gives like, like it works, right? But 
when it gets rid of the background noise, there's this high pitch sort of like, like over top of my voice, and it's like I I guess I could do the RTX thing, like uh, I could do like the, the RTX um, voice can like uh, sound suppressor. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, sound suppression. Hello. Oh, I can't speak. Um, I could do that and then add on like a, a, a another sort of like filter on top of that, but it just starts like you. It doesn't sound like me anymore at that point. I don't know. I'm not an expert at this kind of stuff. I'm not very good at like sound stuff. I don't know how it works. Drummer, you're a sound person. Tell me, explain it. <laughs> Tell me how dumb I'm being. I work with thin shapes without breaking the mesh. Oh, it's called backface masking. Um, so you can see I have it right here, like as a little, a little button on my UI because I'm obsessed with backspace, backface masking. Uh, if you go into brush, scroll to auto masking right here in the brush tab, click that, scroll again, scroll again, and backface masking is right here. You have to enable it and disable it per brush and it will only affect one side of the mesh. If you were being sneaky, you'd probably just say you got here. That's true. Now you're super sneaky. Wow. Mm. RTX doesn't work with Go XLR. Oh, if yeah, if you had that uh, that deck, right? That sucks. That's annoying. You had to turn it off. Yeah, that sucks. How can you remesh your model for UV? Um, if you wanted to remesh your model for, you could do an auto remesh if you wanted to. But if you're if you want like actual like usable topology for animation, I would say uh, you know just decimate your stuff, bring it over to Maya, and you can do a quad draw on top of it. That's that's how I would go about it. So quad draw and Maya is usually how I do my retopology. Some stuff though is like you can get away with Z remeshing it. It's no problem. Room noise messing with it. Yeah, there's uh, like depending on like different different levels of room noise, right? Like if I have my AC on, then I need a different set of filters to work with versus if I have just my HEPA filter on, or if I have nothing on, then the settings change, right? What brush were you using before? Mech cut, ma cut, ma cut, ma cut, ma cut, M-A-H, cut, mech, A. That's what I'm using right here. Woo, sharp, sexy, smooth. You can Google it and you can find it, it's free. Ma cut. M A H cut. Uh, you use a Cintiq for modeling, but you never know how to place the keyboard. You also tried to use the little remote control thing that came with the Cintiq. How do I place my keyboard to be able to model comfortably without wrecking your back after a 10 hour session? I don't know. <laughs> I'm in pain. All the time. I live in pain. I don't know. But um, the best way to save my wrists is to give my my uh, forearm support on my desk. Uh, and here you can see that I have my elbow is almost always rested on my armrest or this table right here. So it's never like, I, I'm not like constantly holding it up. So fatigue doesn't happen on my shoulders. There's always a rest that also helps because I draw from my elbow. I don't draw uh, from my wrist. Like I'm not like doing this. I'm actually making like lines like this. You can probably see that happening as I'm, as I'm working. So that's a, another tip for pain constant pain being an artist is pain um and uh in in terms of like the keyboard placement overall it looks like this right so i've got my cintiq here 
And then right here, so if I were to show you how I have my arm, typically it's like this. So I have, I have uh, some form of a rest, and if my arm gets tired, then I can just, and that's usually how I'm, I'm working. Like if I'm just doing like skulls, I lift my arm like this, and then I put it back down, and then I lift it, and then I put it back down. <laughs> But the, the biggest the biggest thing to do is um, stretches. So if your arms and your back and your shoulders are hurting, best thing is like shoulder rolls like this, right? This is, ooh, I'm cracking. Boy, I'm cracking. These are really good. Um, another one are arm, right? So if you have your arm kind of like this, uh, this is for your, your, your wrist and your forearm is just start doing this, hold it, and then back the other way, pull it back. Right? And then other way, pull it back. That's really good. You'll feel it like all up here. And those are that's very important for both of your arms. Don't overdo it, obviously, otherwise you'll hurt your tendons. But doing that every once in a while really helps. Shaking your, your wrists really helps keep things loose. Even just like turns like this, very important. The razor Tartarus, also instead of a regular keyboard, if you don't know what that is, give it a Google. Yeah, I'll check it out. I mean, like, the thing is, like, I don't know, because my, my problem is I'm constantly changing up the way that my desk is, so I have it set up like this if I'm doing sculpting work. Also, sorry, I don't have the actual model showing, my, my apologies. But if I'm doing sculpting work, I have it set up like this. If I'm doing literally anything else, I like start moving, like I like move my Cintiq over, I like move my keyboard and put my mouse in like everything, like everything moves all the time, so. <laughs> I'm kind of the worst to ask for that kind of thing. It's just important, I think, if you have like a weird setup like I do, to just get up every two hours, do your stretches to minimize your pain, keep yourself flexible. <laughs> like, I find it's not as important, like, it's important to keep yourself comfortable enough that you're not hurting your back, you're not hurting your arms and things like that when you are, um, like when you are set up and sitting down, but don't make it like, don't make it like you so you don't have to get up. You should get up. You have to get up. You have to get up. Get up. <laughs> hey Mars, how are you? I think, yeah, what I was gonna do with this is like, kind of make a... Make like these little like fin things. Song? I, I can just give you the, the link, like the Pretzel Rocks player. It's all like copyright free music. TARDIS Pro Optical Switch Keypad. Even, will it even open? 
Does it want to open? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't show up for me. That link isn't working for me. <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up after. Tar Tartarus Pro. You know what? I'll just do it now. I don't even care. Whatever. Tartarus Pro. Uh, optical switch. Oh, yeah. One of those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I see lots of people using it. It's like up here. Like that 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 could be useful. I would, it's just one of those things. Like I even have like this, the Cintiq buttons right here. So even that could be useful for me if I just kind of like sucked it up and used it, you know? Like I even have, there's even like stuff behind here, like a touch like pad or whatever. Um, sort of like the, the PlayStation, but it's just like doing that like i think my brain is just a little bit stubborn like i'm a little i'm a little stubborn i'm a little stubborn and so i keep using the keyboard <laughs> any advice for getting more motivation for working uh real answer no um because i'm on stream answer <laughs> I, to be honest with you, like I have a lot of struggles finding motivation to work. And I think the crux of the issue is, um, is understanding that you can't find motivation. Motivation, like when, once you understand where motivation comes from and why it even exists, um, like, and, and how to, basically how to, how to create it for like a absolutely anything it'll make a lot more sense. Like I learned this because uh, it, it was through cognitive behavioral therapy when I was younger because of uh, depression, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. It's just like, you know, being diagnosed with clinical depression or whatever. I'm, I'm cool now, but like when, when I was going through a lot of stuff, um, going through CBT actually taught me a lot about how there are, you know real world sort of like make like these these harmful ways of talking so like how do i find motivation the thing is you don't find it you don't and, and you also don't sit around and wait for it to come to you right you create it you don't find it you create it yourself so how that happens is by making a cycle of action which then leads to motivation which then leads to inspiration which then leads to action which then leads to motivation and becomes a cycle the only way to start that cycle though is by taking action as hard as it is to do that sometimes you just have to force yourself to sit down and start doing anything blank canvases can be really scary it, even in a real life sense right this applies to everything what i'm saying um which <laughs> me giving life advice maybe not the best thing but uh this is sort of this is what i've learned anyways is um you know blank canvases can be scary when you don't have like a goal it can be scary but sometimes you don't necessarily need a specific goal and you can create a goal that is just okay put your put your pen down on the canvas and just do something it doesn't really matter what it is just start doing something oh that looks like this okay you have a lead you have somewhere that you want to go maybe it does it look like a cat okay now i want to do a cat so look up pictures of cats right and so it's sort of this thing of like if you start doing something it will that action will lead to a motivation to keep going but you have to you have to force it yeah Yes, and that's that's another thing too, is this like this idea of energy coming from what you call like rest. Um, that that's a little bit of a tricky one as well, because your mental energy is is a lot different than your physical energy and how how you can get that going. Um, sometimes the reason why you feel so drained is because you haven't been doing anything mentally stimulating and what i mean by that is challenging yourself um like if you're just sitting on like sitting watching show after show on netflix or playing game after game you know and you're wondering like oh how come i don't have any inspiration to 
do artwork like you know these things look really cool i would love to do a dragon or something that i just saw in like game of thrones or whatever um some of that lack of of motivation essentially just comes from lack of action right and you're just kind of uh you know <laughs> you're just kind of like sitting back and letting things entertain you but not necessarily mentally stimulate you and challenge yourself and problem solve and work the brain but like i said like you know you you should be aware i am not a therapist clearly and so when I say that you should take these things with a grain of salt, I really do mean it. But I think that there is an overall um, life truth to that cycle of action, creating motivation rather than waiting for inspiration to strike, in which case that will give you the energy you need to create something, it's rare. It's a rare thing to happen. If you do get that spark of 2 a.m. inspiration, I say go for it. Don't let it die and fizzle out. Why not go for it? But when it does fizzle out, because it will, it always does, it always fizzles out. When it fizzles out, then always remember, well, if I just take action and I brute my way through a little bit of things that I'm not really sure I wanna do, you do it and do it, and then all of a sudden part of it becomes interesting again and you learn something maybe you haven't before which motivates you to keep going and you get a little win and a little win and another win and suddenly now you're inspired by something new that you've learned and the action can start to snowball and cycle and continue and it sounds easy right in theory it sounds easy it's a hard thing to do but it's something you have to catch yourself right you have to catch yourself thinking um the negative thoughts and saying okay like i'm gonna take control of this and i'm just gonna do something and that's not to say that you should never sit back and watch netflix or sit back and play a game lord knows i do a lot of that but if you are thinking like i want to create something and you keep making excuses for yourself well the reason why you're not just like getting that hit of inspiration that artistic inspiration to just like work 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 or you get tired of your project or whatever it's because it doesn't last it's that that's a myth God. the least depressed person on the planet when i'm streaming like, i'm very happy when i'm around people i'm not i wouldn't say i'm depressed i'm not depressed um you know I, I i used to have like some like a really serious case of depression you know medication all that kind of stuff but it's been a while uh since medication and all that I, i've been i've been good i mean good Anxiety is my new struggle. <laughs> yeah, you gotta pick one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I love streaming. I love talking to people. Honestly, this is what creates, I'm gonna be honest, you wanna hear about what my cycle is? With, when you, you, you talk about action that creates motivation and then inspiration and then it keeps rolling on itself. Um, these, these streams, are the action which creates me to essentially inspire and motivate myself through just talking to you guys and just being excited about just art in general right it's finding that fun you need fun <laughs> so you know that's that's where like earlier what i was talking about kind of like weaves into this as well is finding things that are interesting to you and then making yourself do some of it even when you don't feel like it to kind of like create that motivation to keep going because you need you need win you need little wins as well right um so i don't know i'm not i'm not a therapist so if you actually have like 
crippling depression and you haven't been able to get anything done for a while like that's a serious problem you should go and get some help for that if you can <laughs> but uh yeah on a general scale on a general general sense that's uh my advice for the motivation thing um if it means anything <laughs> i don't know Someone did ask about that, right? Like, I'm not just like, I'm not just like saying things, right? Like, I'm not crazy. Like, somebody asked about that, right? Like, Mar Mars, you asked, about like, I'm not crazy, right? Like, I just, I start ranting and then like, I don't know if I'm just like preaching and, and being obnoxious or if somebody actually asked something and I'm answering, oh no. I'm sorry if I was, I'm sorry. Anyways, anyways, I should, I should, I'm gonna work. <laughs> Oh, let's play with, um, let's play with the spiral tool. Spiral? Is it spiral? Spiral. I love this. I love the spiral tool. Woo! Actually, let me give it an overall big. And then some tinies. And then getting some like turbulent flow oh no they're all a figment of my of my imagination oh no I am going crazy <laughs> yeah anxiety is everyone's problem I yeah it's so it's so common and some sometimes it can be like a, like a really big problem and you need help for it but I think that like a lot of people like deal with stuff but there's like stigmas for talking about, you know, having mental issues and things. Spiral is the best, yes. We're not even real. No, I, you're all real. You don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Oh. <laughs> Try to be there every time and post. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Okay, don't. So, like, I really appreciate that, but like, oh, don't, don't put like your work in, f like, behind. You should put your work, like, you know, your professional life in front of these streams, right? And and also your sleep schedule. Like, if this is interfering with some of your sleep, you should definitely be getting that as well. You gotta, you gotta take care of your own health. Like, it's it's so important. Like, I really. I don't know. It, it's flattering, but at the same time, like, like I really don't want you guys to hurt yourself. I don't know if I like this though. I was playing with the spiral, but I wasn't thinking enough while I was doing. <laughs> so now it's just kind of like I haven't really done anything this entire time, huh? Just been talking. I'm gonna leave it like that just because it's like aerodynamic and we want it to be aerodynamic. I don't know why I said it that way, but I did. And we're gonna roll with it. We have 45 minutes left. I gotta block out these feet. Let me give, uh, give something. Doesn't necessarily need to be like finished. It just needs to have some, like it needs to look a little a little okay you're just no don't tell me you're bots i'll believe it no i'm kidding <laughs> Oh, 
honestly like talking about bots though there's like some of them on twitter like i just i can't tell if it's a bot or people like some of these people are just i don't know man i feel like twitter's like full of bots <laughs> like some of the things that i see is just like it's crazy art twitter lately has been something wild dude i don't know what's up with everyone i feel like everybody needs just like a good social break you know like just don't go on social media for a little bit i think everybody needs to just do that <laughs> how many years to be a professional i've been sculpting uh for six years so my six years will look different to everyone else's six years. Everybody's gonna be different. So if one person were to spend six years doing something, it'll look different than the next person doing six years. You know, the best thing that I could say is just put as much time as you can, you know, without hurting yourself or hurting you know, the, the money, in, the income stream that you already have to take care, put food on the table. If you're putting food on the table, the rest of your time that you can put into doing fun projects and advancing yourself when you can. Some people, it'll take a lot longer because they have more responsibilities. Like if you have kids and if you have, um, you know, if you have to work like double shifts and things like that at, at, uh, at other jobs, doing stuff like this can be harder, right? But it's the, the, the important thing is, is that you're finding fun projects for yourself to do and putting in as much time as you can to doing them. So for me, it's it, it's been six years, but I don't have a ton of other responsibilities other than like my dog and my partner. So I can, you know, I can do a lot more in a day than some other people. So my six years is gonna look different than some other people's six years, you know what I mean? So don't worry about, um, don't worry too much about time. Like the, the big thing I can tell you is that no matter what, any kind of art that you get into, it's gonna take time uh, to get good at any of it. There's no fast tracking, unfortunately. It's, it's not really like that. I wish I could tell you that there's like a magic, like this is what you do to be good at art really fast, but if there was, Lord knows I'd be doing it. <laughs> You gotta be patient, right? That's that's it. Be patient with yourself and just do as much as you can when you can. I think it's important to to stay away from things like toxic positivity and things like that. Like, you know, you gotta be real with yourself. You can't like like if you're not feeling happy, then you're not feeling happy, right? And you gotta take a step back reevaluate the things that you're doing make sure that you know make sure you're, you're doing things for the right reason doing art for the the right reason the right reason being like you genuinely enjoy it right if you're doing art for literally any other reason than like you really like art like you're doing it for money like good luck man like you're not gonna get a ton of money doing this especially not fast Toxic positivity, yeah. So, a lot of a lot, I, a lot of like social influencers, I find um, it's something that you should probably work out, like look out for in terms of uh, people spreading positivity like to an extreme. Like they're like absolutely no negative vibes here, like only positive things. Like you know, if you're sad, like you know, stop. Like if you just like do these motivational things, you know, like over overly watching motivational videos and things like that. Um, it's kind of a form of toxic positivity because you're not taking the time for yourself to give that is, you know, that that action cycle a chance. You're just sort of giving your brain that, yeah, I can do it sort of like boost without actual outcomes and so if you keep doing that you're kind of creating a 
cognitive dissonance. What that means is a um, your reality in your head doesn't match up with the reality in your life and that can create a lot of problems for yourself as well so that's that's sort of what toxic positivity is 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 in a nutshell is just a sort of like lying to yourself about your own emotions and not just kind of sitting with your feelings sometimes you're gonna feel frustrated and it's okay right um but some there's there's some like social things out there that advocate for you know just that yeah you can do it yeah you can do it like and some of that is good but i think a lot of it needs to be um understanding how to look at yourself and be like okay well the truth here is you know i'm not i'm not putting in the time i want to do anything positive like for myself i need to take control of it you know things like making a to-do list is important but if that's your form of like oh i did something today because i made a to-do list that's hurting yourself as well because it's giving you that feeling of accomplishment without actually accomplishing anything you just wrote everything down that you needed to do without actually doing things so it's like it's a little it's a little it's a little uh touchy yeah People that say, just stop feeling bad in the face of legit sadness is toxic positivity. Yeah, it's anything that, like, is not properly empathizing with the situation. You can't expect, like, you know, all socials, you know, any, all social media uh, people to empathize with every situation, right? Because when they give, like, advice or whatever, um, it's usually for one specific situation not every single one at the same time right so to expect that is ridiculous but you know like there is a level of uh you know just disregarding that real feelings and real people happen and just saying you know you're you're the you're the owner of your own feelings just be happy you know that's toxic positivity somebody saying like depression is is a mindset you know be you know just get out there and be happy that's toxic positivity right because it's it in a sense like they're close to the mark right and you're starting that action and then you know that action leads to uh a that action cycle action leads to motivation leads to inspiration cycle but they're they're so they're a little bit too far from the point where it actually becomes detrimental so it's a interesting thing to like look out for as well as toxic positivity anyways anyways that's why i also advocate that you don't put this stream in front of your real world responsibilities so i think somebody said earlier and i don't i don't know maybe it was just like a joke maybe it's like you don't really have like serious meetings or something like that but if you actually are putting like putting off business meetings just to like watch streams or something like that because um because of like the advice that a streamer gives and you think it's really good that's that's both flattering but also kind of like you know you got to look out for yourself as well yeah, what's this channel about? I know, I know. I, I, I start going on like these rants and, um, and I probably shouldn't. I'm sorry. Um, this channel is just like a bunch of different streamers who sculpt uh, different things with different workflows. And I am one of them. We all use ZBrush. So it's Pixelogic's official Twitch channel and the streamers here are norm like some of them are devs but others are like me which were just like volunteer artists so we just kind of we just kind of like sculpt stuff for fun you know would i like muscular females yeah why not i'm confused <laughs> strange question um no, 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 it's not psychological help stream. No, 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 no. If you want psychological help, go and see a professional. Don't turn to social media to solve your, um, solve your issues. If you have like actual struggles, you should definitely talk to somebody professional. 
I am not a professional in that regard. Please do not take my advice as professional advice, uh, professional medical advice, professional psychological advice. And on that note, I'm going to stop saying things because I don't, I don't, I don't want to advocate for that. <laughs> I know you were kidding, but I just, I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody getting the wrong idea. Can I freestyle? Yes, this is freestyle. <laughs> this is just fun. Unless you mean rap. I can't freestyle rap, no. I can barely speak as it is properly, like I don't know. Um, rapping would probably destroy my brain. I have lots of respect for people who's, who are able to actually do that. I don't know how. How, you, how does your brain work that way, but no. I gotta block out that back foot too, huh? Dang it. What am I doing? I'm just talking about things that don't need to be talked about. As I do. It is so hot in this room. I'm so freaking sweaty right now. I want to turn on my AC so bad, but I don't want to also like give you guys ear blood. No ear blood. It's still, yeah, it's still going. Rock, paper, scissors. scissors. <laughs> What are the things that I have the most fun sculpting? Um, huh. I, like, I really like sculpting creatures. I think that's why I like this stream so much, is because I really enjoy sculpting just, like, for fun creatures. I don't think I have, like, a specific type of creature that I enjoy more than others. It's all kind of fun to me. I don't care about under this foot. Did I already say that? Or did I just think that? Oh my god, the other day I started, um, like just, uh, like, <laughs> I was just, I was doing the dishes and I was just like, I thought I was thinking, but I wasn't. I was just saying everything that I was thinking out loud. And Eric was like, what are you even talking about? Because it was just like, I think I was like going from like, Topic to topic.
I don't know, does anybody else ever do that? Like, just like, oh, I think I'm, I'm talking in my, like, I think I'm in my head, but you're actually not. I don't know. Cute ankles. Cankles! Cankles! I get cankles. Fluid retention. <laughs> Where are you? Oh no. Oh no, I hope that I'm home. That's what I hope. Hope I'm home. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to live in a tropical country. I like this. It's already hot here. I don't. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Thanks, no. I love to see you here in chat. <laughs> Do I believe in God? No. But I don't care if you do. Um, that happens a lot. Oh, when you respond in a text, your head, but not in real life, and then you get a few hours asking for. A <gasps> Yo, yeah. Are we like living in like an alternate, like weird? Oh, what's wrong with us, man? Like, why? Are we ADD? Is that an ADD thing? I don't feel like I'm ADD. Maybe I am. I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not. No. I'm not gonna self-diagnose either. <laughs> a distracted person thing, yeah. Just a general, like... Yeah. Like a lot of- a lot of different things on your mind all the time. Like, you get bored, like, I don't know, I get bored of thoughts, like, I, I'll, I'll be thinking really hard about something, and then I'll just be like, okay, whatever. And then, and then it's like the next thing, and somebody else will still be on that same thought. I don't like this song. This is a woodpecker song that I have to skip every single stream. Get out of here. I wish I could just like not have that in this playlist. I don't watch anime, no. No. Hi Smokey! How are you doing? It's good to see you. Talking out loud stuff? Uh, sometimes when I try to solve a hard thinking problem, it helps to sort out your mind when, for example, game mechanics problems get overwhelming by forming it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Things can actually... Like, when you, when you realize that you're doing it, it can be helpful. But, like, if you're, like, in public and you're, like, looking at something and, like, you start, like, just talking out loud... Oh my god, that's happened to me, man. The, oh, the embarrassment. Even if you're not saying anything wrong, it's just like, oh god. <laughs> I showed you my underwear, essentially. Like, that's my head. Like, oh, I didn't want you to hear that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, how do I deal with procrastination? I, I talked about that a little earlier. I talked that, yeah, I talked about that a little bit, a little bit earlier. Um, I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna rant about it again. I think if you go back like 10 minutes or like 20 minutes, you could probably find some of that for maybe a half an hour in the stream. Am I a gamer? Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm a gamer girl. <laughs> I'm not like other girls. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yes, I play games. Who doesn't these days? See ya, Seed. Have a good, good evening. Stay safe to you as well.
Woof, Monty. Woof. Is that a Pokemon? Might as well be. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a creature. It ain't a Pokemon, but it's a creature, some kind. Uh, the ZBrush update. Um, I don't, like if somebody's a beta tester for Pixelogic, they can't like, like there's no point like asking like the the artist because like they can't talk about it anyways. Even if they were, they can't say if they were. So I hope I'm pretty sure like I'm pretty sure it'll come out soon though for everybody to try. It looks like uh there's like cloth. There's like cloth sim that they have in there. Um, they were showing like some Z modeler updates, I think, which were also really cool. And like this, uh, I thought it was like the, 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 like the, the like interactive cloth stuff as well. Looks kind of cool. Pretty cool. Very cool. Whatever you have it. Yeah, it kind of looks like the shield uh, dog Pokemon. I know, I know. It's got that. It's got that vibe. It's got that vibe. Except it's not a dog. It's sort of a weird gremlin thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, the new simulation stuff looks really fun. Like a lot of fun. Playing around, playing with, uh, playing with Core Mini. Oh yeah. Do you like Core Mini? It's it's sort of like a really basic version, like super stripped down basic version of ZBrush. So it'll just get you like started with like uh, sculpting. Um, it's not essentially the same thing as what I'm doing here because I'm using a Dynamesh workflow, but that like Core Mini essentially uses Sculptress Pro, so you can get like a lot of really cool stuff even just doing for free. So. Does anybody play Risk of Rain? Yeah, it's just something. It's it's it's, it's a little like yeah. You don't you play Risk of Rain, dude? Have you did you see like the recent trailer? Like I think I don't know if it came out today or yesterday or something. They had like this cinematic trailer for the game and it was so weird to see because it's like, like I liked it, but it wasn't anything to do with the actual game. Like it didn't feel like the game at all. Oh, Risk of Rain, um, Risk of Rain 2 is what I'm talking about. Yeah, Risk of Rain 2 is like, oh, it's so fun. It's so, I, I have a disgusting number of hours in that game. I'm, it's, 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 it's horrible. <laughs> Yeah, the trailer like is for it's like for the uh, the PlayStation the PlayStation release. I think like the console PlayStation release of the game. They have made like this um really strange like like you you'll probably like it. It's like charming, but it's not like the game. <laughs> like it doesn't even come close to showing you the chaos. I don't know. Strange. I don't know.
The Watch Dogs cinematic? Yeah, I saw it. Dude, honestly, with Watch Dogs, if I were to play that, which I probably won't, because, like, it looks like a time sink, but, um, if I were to play that, I'd want a whole team of grandmas. Just saying. I just want grandma infiltrators. Only grandma infiltrators. Like, it kind of, it kind of gave me, like, the, the watchdog stuff, um, gave me, uh, Saints Row vibes. Like, the new watchdog stuff, you know? Star Citizen? Oh my god. Oh my god, Star Citizen needs help. <laughs> I don't- I don't understand it. I- I like, I don't- I don't see- I don't know. Star Citizen, man. I don't know. I don't want to get into that. That's a- that's a can of worms. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to- no. Watchdog games feels generic for you. I mean, like, everybody's gonna have, like, their favorite types of games, right? So, if it's not for you, it's not for you. I feel like, like, the new one that they have coming out looks kinda- it looks like it'd be kinda fun, but it also looks like it's a bit of, like, a time sink, so I don't know if I'm gonna be playing it. The medium- dude, the medium looks so cool because you got like the two- the two world things going on at the same time. I don't know how that's gonna- I don't know how that's gonna play. I'm really curious. Like, it looks really neat. It's like, you know, whenever a game comes out that's like innovative like that, I always get excited. Like, oh, that's new. That's different. Let me add it. Let me give it a taste. Yeah, Star Citizen. I don't. I don't want to talk about Star Citizen. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to talk about Star. I don't want it. <laughs> Thanks, Smokey. I appreciate it. I want a game where we can choose your avatars as a start to build a character. Is that weird? Where you choose your avatars as a start to build your character? I don't think that's. What you mean, like your little display picture? You want to start with a display picture? Is that what you're talking about? That's kind of weird. That is kind of weird. <laughs> I want to look into the MMORPG of the Amazon Game Studio just to see if there's any good innovations there. And I don't know. They, 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 like Amazon Games threw out this, uh, what was it? The Crucible, right? Like they, they had that drop and then it did so poorly that they had to put it back into, like, it, they had to unrelease it. You had to like pull it. <laughs> it's crazy. Like nobody's playing it anymore because it did so bad when it came out and now they're like in alpha again. Like I, I don't think I've seen that. <laughs> I honestly don't think I've seen that happen before. No, that's not true. I have, but like Yeah, it feels bad, man, big time. Sucks too, because like the character design it, from the Crucible like looked really, really cool. I liked them. I thought they were pretty appealing. Uh, Gameplay wise, I don't know. I didn't try it because, well, it like couldn't. <laughs> so. I just heard it was sort of like a microtransaction hell. Ugh, microtransactions. Okay, I'm not gonna. 
I'm not doing it. Did I play Celeste? I haven't, okay, I have Celeste, right? I bought Celeste um, a while ago on Steam at full price. And then recently there was like this um, bundle on, I can't remember what site, but it was like the racial injustices bu bundle. It was like, you only have to pay $5 and you get like thousands of games. It was ridiculous. There were a lot of them were like, you know, experimental, but there was like a bunch of like really cool indie games. One of them was Celeste. So now I have, I have two copies of Celeste and I still haven't played it. <sighs> oh, trust me. I want to play it. It's just, I don't have tons of time to play so many games anymore. And it sucks because I love games, but it's just like, Gotta pick my struggles. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I want to do. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. I actually picked up Celeste because I enjoyed um, enjoyed playing Dead Cells so much. I was like, okay, give me another platformer. And Celeste was like, cool, because it's also about mental health and all that. And their studio is pretty freaking dope the developers are dope i was like hell yeah i want to play this and uh and then i just haven't yet so i know it'll be a good game i just need the time to just be like okay today's celeste day you know like when i was getting through the last of us uh part two i was like I was kind of frustrated with myself, right? Because I get in, this is this is a total me thing now. Um, I, I get in like these like moods of like, oh, I shouldn't be playing these games. Like I want to just like get through this game as fast as possible. Now, like the first day I'll be like, oh yeah, I have time to play a game. I'm going to start this campaign game or whatever, because I know that it's contained. It's not open world. I can finish it and then get back to work. However, something like The Last of Us, like, I'm really, really bad at stealth games, I swear to god. I, like, when those creepers, like, the, the little, like, gremlin, little Smeagol-looking things in those, like, dark rooms were around, I literally was standing around, like, come, hit me, hit me, I swear to god, just hit me, I'm gonna fucking, I would literally, like, put, like, bombs all around my feet, and I was like, bring it! Like, I, really bad at sneaking, really bad. Um, I just don't have the patience for it which I know is opposite of what you should have for like, you know, playing sneaking games. Cause that's like the whole point is like, you know, you're sneaking around and being all like, oh my God, so tense. But I'm just like, yeah, get through it. Cause I just wanted the story. So, but then I was playing on a hard difficulty. So I had to like, <laughs> so I remember just being a little bit like frustrated with myself because I couldn't uh, get through it fast enough to get back to my, back to what I was doing with work, which sucks. So I actually don't start a lot of games because of that reason, because I know I'm gonna get frustrated with myself because I don't finish it fast enough, but I need to finish it because if I don't finish it, then like I'm always thinking about it and I need to like finish it so that I can stop thinking about it. And so it's like this, ooh. <laughs> So I've got a lot of games on my list of to play, but I don't know when I'm going to play them. Yeah, the it, the uh, the itch.io bundle. Yeah, it's good. Fable remake is in the works. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. They made. Uh, yeah, it all went to charity though. That's what it. They they made like over five million dollars last I checked. It all went to charity. It was really really awesome. Uh, where I download a bunch of those on random in the bundle. Yeah, I, I want to, I want to, but like I said, like, I don't have time. 
Like, it really sucks, too, because I really enjoy um, open world games, but I, I tell myself there's n I'm not going near those. I can't... I can't... Because uh, I just get obsessed, and then I don't get anything done. Like, maybe if I'm, like, on a work hiatus, like, let's say I don't have any freelance contracts going, I wouldn't mind playing an open world game, right? Because then I have have time to put into it. But with freelance, yeah, open world. <laughs> and somebody who needs like completion, I'm a bit of a completionist. So it's like, maybe not like that much because I've, I've kind of slacked, like given myself a little bit of slack when it comes to that kind of stuff, but like finishing things 100%, but damn. I don't know. I just can't leave it. I can't leave it alone. If I had, if I don't finish a game, I need to finish it. Like I haven't finished The Witcher 3. It's just sort of sitting there. But the reason why I haven't finished it is because it's open world and I need to like, everybody who runs up to me is like, Witcher, Witcher. I'm like, yes, I shall do your bidding. Person who I don't know, what do you need? <laughs> Witch, huh? Yeah, it's the artist. Oh my god, it's so hot in here. I only have five more minutes, go. Alternative to not having time to play games is watching play along videos of people playing. Yeah, I would only like I only do that for specific type games though. If it's story based, I I would rather experience it. I would rather experience it. Like something for like The Last of Us 2, for example, you have to play that game to get the full scope of what it was trying to do. If you just kind of watch somebody play it, I feel like you're not getting the same emotional impact because in the last scene you feel like you like holding like I'm not gonna anyways I'm not gonna spoil anything I'm just saying that like you you need to be a, you need to you need to be like in it so a lot of like story games um, I don't I don't watch let's plays of I would rather experience them. I, no, I don't, I didn't, I don't, so I'm gonna get flack for saying this, but like, Breath of the Wild is not, it, it really didn't catch my attention, it's not something that is super interesting to me, like the Zelda games are not, like, I don't know, like they're charming, right? But I just, I lose interest in those kinds of games really quickly, it's just, it's just me. screen or pen tablet yeah this is a pen tablet this is a a um uh blah, 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 a uh, cintiq it's a wacom cintiq wow i can talk yeah it's a 22 8 uh, 22 hd from wacom cintiq hello i can talk <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a monitor at the same time as being a pen tablet. Pretty nifty, expensive. Don't recommend it if you're just getting into art. But if you've been doing it for a while, highly recommend it. Expensive. It's a good gift to yourself. Good business expense. You can write it off, buy it.
Given the choice, Cintiq 24 Pro or 32? 32 is overkill in my opinion. Um, yeah, 32 is overkill in my opinion. I have the 22 HD and this is like more than enough space for me to do what I need to do and see what I need to see. You've got a 32, like if this is 22, a 32 is like, like why do you need that? <laughs> You're gonna be doing this. Do you need that? Do you work like that? Do you need this? Is this what you want? I don't know. You can afford it, I guess, but it's excess in my opinion. All right. Um, let me put this, because we're going to be getting ready to stop here. Barely did anything for the last bit of the stream. My bad. Now I'll put my socials back up. Mm hmm. Oh. Okay. And here. Actually. Do I want to have that little thing on, or...? Yeah, why not? Alright. And this one down here. Voila! Where? Ah! Uh, okay, there. Okay, uh, yeah. So we're done. Yes, I paint as well. Uh, <laughs> you can use the 32 inch one as a bed. Yeah, like actually, it's so overkill in my opinion. All right, let's see what who's gonna be next. Today is. Today is the 29. Yeah. Uh, Thursday the 30th is, so is going to be the next person, so nobody's after me today, but tomorrow, um, for anybody who speaks Japanese, uh, Pixodev is, uh, Daizuk is going to be tomorrow, so you can check him out. Uh, otherwise, give Pixelogic a follow, because then you can see all the other amazing artists that do stream here. Next week, I'm sure there's going to be even more. There always is. Um, my socials are right there. Monty's staring at me because he knows that it's uh, my sign off. This is what I do every time. <laughs> he is. He knows. So yeah, if you have, uh, if you want to check out any of my work or anything like that, uh, feel free to check. I'm sorry, my socials there. Um, follow Pixelogic for more streamers. ZBrush has a 45 day, or no, 30, 30, 30 day free trial uh, for the full thing. If you want a free version of ZBrush, um, just to like a free, like super, super basic version, there is ZBrush Core Mini. It's free for personal use, and you can try out Sculptress Pro with that essentially. Um, and then if you want just like a cheap version of ZBrush that doesn't have all the features, but it has enough for you to like um, do kind of the same thing as what I'm doing here, then there's also ZBrush Core. Not Core Mini, but Core. So yeah. Yeah. I, all right. Have a, uh, a good rest of you guys this evening. I will see you in the next one. And... Yeah, all right, okay, bye-bye.